Oh. <laughs> User left your channel. User joined your channel. User left your channel. Yep, yeah, so the Tuskers are currently brought the looks like they're Glen Rushcom. Gonna start A2 Demoses to Navitases. Footwork have brought the, the broadsword slip near curse comp that the camels fielded as well. It was in the camels list for Worlds Collide. Should be fairly interesting. It looked like the Tuskers team is gonna be blasters. They worked in right on top of the beacon with their Navitases in at range. But equally the broadsword slip near team has also Brawled in at zero, so we're going to see a lot of DPS applied really fast here, and I think this match is going to be over pretty quickly. Yeah, I realised throughout that whole time I was talking, I think I had my mic muted, so it was probably good because I was kind of distracted with setting up the um, tournament. <laughs> um, but we're about to start the first match now, so um, Des, if you could give us a one-minute countdown in local, um, and then the fight will be starting soon. So yeah, like Bob said, we've got the um, the armor rush comp versus the semi. I think this is going to be a very very brawly match. Bob, who do you think is going to take this? At the moment, I think Tuskers are probably going to take it. They've got a lot of extra DPS on the beacon at zero, uh, whereas the footwork team really only has that uh, that broad turn that slip near. The linchpin here is the curse. If the curse can be off and off those blasters, I'm able to take it here, but it's basically going to be control over sheer damage in this match. Yeah. Um, the Slepnit and the Broadsword local tanks should not be underestimated, though. They're really, really strong. And, like, I, I've seen uh, we've in. We did. This, when we did the similar thing previously, um, there was a lot. There was it, the. Match we had actually a matchup between Slepnids and Broadswords uh, against each other, and it went for a long, very long match because those ASPs just run and run and run. <laughs> uh, okay, so the countdown is about to go now. Um, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and the match is underway. Um, so it's very creative counting there, Bay. <laughs> Did I yeah, do matches are under undergoing. So immediately, Battle Dog and the Navitas is taking huge chunks of damage. Uh, on the Tuskers team, no damage so far on the Footwork team. Navtas is into half armor now. Curse is taking damage now on the Footwork side. Looks like that Navtas is not receiving reps yet, though. No, he's uh, he's piloting away from the hostiles, though, so he'll be out of those auto cannons range now, so he'll be safe from them. It looks like he's being chased by some ECM drones, um, or no, Johnny from his partner Navitas is being chased by ECM drones so without Johnny's reps he might go down the curse is really struggling now he's dipping into low shield he's being pummeled away by those blaster ships at zero they're all on top of a, uh, each other um, can he hold up under those yeah. burst reps I don't think he should be able to yeah it does look like that curse is sadly gonna die for footwork it looks like he's weapon scrammed by all those blaster ships Versus mm -hmm. do look as if they are planning reps to him but it doesn't look like it's gonna be enough as soon as that curse goes oh Sully in the Tusker's Astarte is taking a lot of damage now, he's in half armor. He is. If and they trade the Astarte for the curse, he might be able to do well, but otherwise if he loses curse, I think it's going to be curtains for footwork. Yeah, curse is dipping now, and he's out of shields. Uh, he's crawling a tiny sliver back from those bursts, but no, he's about to pop. Sully, though, uh, those no those newts might have just absolutely crippled Sully's Astarte. He should... Yeah, that, that curse is gone now. The, the Astarte is going into destruction now, though, half structure on the Astarte. It does look like they're just overheating Navitas on the reps on him now. Yep, yeah, um, he's cap boosting it. Yep, yep, yep. 
Um, the sorry, I was just about to say the, the start. He should have a cat booster in there, I'm guessing. So that might just be able to, without the curse on the field, that might be able to drive his tank just long enough to make the difference. Maybe not. No, he's... I, I, I don't know. A start for a curse. That is a very good trade. That is an extremely good trade for is, Yeah, it's a good start for them. Um, the Navitas with Battle Dog now in half armor. Um, it looks like. I'm just trying to find Johnny. Yeah, no, him and Johnny are close. Oh, a burst, a burst just got obliterated Boom. by the Tuskers team. Uh, yeah. So footwork is a logic down in the moment. Yeah, and uh, the Phobos of Tebel um, is also taking a lot of punishment now. It looks like the Slepner is right on top of he's him. He's got him pretty solidly tackled. Um, and the Broadsword's moving over towards him now. So he's going to be taking a lot of damage. While the Repi Frigates... Oh, the other burst just completely obliterated. Footwork now only down to two ships. Yeah, that burst just got volleyed off the field. No logistics left for Footwork now. The full boss on the Tusker side is taking a lot of damage, though. It's just the Broadsword and the Slepner versus two Demoses and two Namtasses now. We'll see if those reps will make a difference over who's going to take this match. If they can get the Phobos down uh, before they lose either of their ships, it puts them in quite a strong position because I think that Dimos has to get through a lot of ASP charges on his own. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. Because um, these guys are killing, even with the Navitas reps, they've killed that Phobos off. Um, and the Navitas. That, 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 that Phobos is down. So it's two logistics frigates and a Demos versus a Slipnir that's deep into its ASP charges. It may actually be already out of ASP charges and a broadsword. It's going to be a DPS race here. I think Footwork has this, though. They might win on points. I, My hunch is they're going to lose the Slipnir, but they're going to kill the Demos. Oh no, but those those repping frigates will be able to keep the demons alive with its only bro only broadsword DPS. And the broadsword is a nice little ship. It's got a very strong tank of its own, but it's only probably packing about 450, 500 DPS, which is not going to be able to enough to burst um, get through those Navitas reps, I don't think. Yeah, so the broadsword and the slip is on top of the demons now. The boss is not taking a lot of damage though. I wonder if Navitas is our successful keeping up. Big chunk of shield damage there from Battle Dog. He is in half armor now. Yeah, it looks they, like the Slepnir might be trying to poke them down. Frigates, they may be able to take this. Oh, definitely, yeah. They're forcing but them away at least. going to lose the Slepnir eventually. Yeah, Battle Dog is flying away from his partner, interestingly. And Johnny's trying to catch up, catch up now, but the repping range on these things is not nowhere near as fast as Cruiser. Uh, sorry, as far as Cruiser reps. Um, Kalex has still got ASP charges left, but, John, but Battle Dog is about to pop. A, Yes, he's gone. Yeah, Battle Dog is gone. The longer this match goes on, though, the the more advantage Tuskers have, because that Slipnir is going to run out of charges soon. Oh, the second Logi going, though, it's going to be a Broadsword and Slipnir versus one Demos. I think it's over now for Tuskers if that Logi does go down. Johnny's gone into destruction now. Yeah, it does look as if he is, he is yeah, dead. He's, he's gone. Yeah, I think I think, I think think Footwork should have this, barring any uh, major fuck-ups. Jack Lee's just going to get one away now. Um, he's probably going to have a, a nanite paste fueled armor epper, um, which will run out, and that'll be curtains for him, I imagine. Um, will he get now, down this slip near is, the This slip near is must be out of ASB charges now. It must be out of ASB charges. If this team must can kill this slip near before... He dies himself. He may have a chance of killing the broadsword. The broadsword doesn't really do all that much damage, but that Demos isn't half armor though, and the, the Slipnir isn't really taking all that much damage. No, um, I guess, I guess the Slipnir's resist are probably helping him really now. Um, even though the Demos is probably doing six, seven hundred DPS, a lot of that is resisted by the Slipnir. It's natural resist, and he's probably. I'm pretty sure they have it. In fact, I know they do because they're using the same setups as. Um, Turn left it in the Worlds Collide. They've got a shield, li a hardener uh, link in there as well, and also with the mine link on top of that. Looks like the Demos is about to pop. Yeah, it's now over for Tuskers. That Demos is going to pop. Not enough damage onto that Slipnir. It does look as if the Slipnir was able to reload the CSB charges. Yep, yep. Demos is repping small amounts of Oh, he does have a big rep, but I think this, that Slipnir and that Broadsword should still be able to break for that ancillary rep that that Demos has. Oh, a big chunk of uh, rep there. Yep, huge local tank Demos on that hole. holding hole. on. But still no damage applied from the Demos. No He's burnt out his guns or something? He must have burnt out his guns, yeah. It might just be drone DPS on the Slepnir now, which is why it's just not having any effect. I can't see whether or not... He's he still knows. firing, he he's still firing. The drones are all jammed, drones. Ah, okay, so he's getting jammed. Yeah, right, well spotted. So Demos is gone. Work wins the first match. Yep. Um, brilliant. 
Okay, so I'm going to start clearing the field with my um, uh, fancy ship here, and um, I'll hand you over to Bob, um, who will um, introduce the lovely gentleman who I haven't said anything yet. Okay, guys. So in the studio with me, we currently have Gorski Car, Internet Spaceship Bad Boy. I've got Pothney and Chesser. How you doing, User guys? Left your channel. Hey, pretty good. Can't complain. Yeah, pretty good. So, so Apoth, how what did you feel about that match? So I spent a lot of the match watching the Logi Freaks. At the very beginning of the match, um, one of the bursts worked in, and I think it worked in accidentally a little bit too far out than it wanted to. So he wasn't quite within rep range of the curse at the beginning of the match, which was the first primary. So he burnt, MWD'd in, flew in. I mean, I'm pretty He's sure he even had his MWD channel. overheated. But he realized as he was getting closer, oh wait, if I go too far, I mean, scare my way. So we saw him just kind of fly out. So it was a very scary moment. And I think that it, it's really telling that the key points for me in that match was as soon as a logi frig got caught, suddenly the match switched from one side having the advantage to the other. You got to okay. be very, very careful piloting. You know, the T1 frigates, but like they were, they were really, really, really key part of the team as well as all the expensive Sletnir Astarte goodness. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree. What did you think about that, Gorski? Um, yeah, I think I agree, but like, I think the curse in the beginning, like, he got tackled instantly. He should have probably worked on 50 and tried to keep a better range. Yeah, I was watching myself, and that curse was very, very close to... Yeah, he got, like, rammed and... Uh... Yeah, I, I, I almost want to make a, a comment on that as well. It was really strange to me when I saw the curse basically warp in almost at zero. Um, I think it was a really lucky play that they happened to pull out the killing the Astarte for the trade of the curse because that curse, should it have fallen with nothing else, um, it would have been a totally different game. It just is weird to me that a really weakly tank shift like that would be so close, especially when, you know, 32, 30, 37k uh, newts on it, you know, just sitting in the back or at least... Um, attempted to nano a little bit more. I mean, it could completely, if it wanted to, force off their logi just by sitting, you know, in between them. Uh, it, it, it was an interesting play. I think everything turned out well, but certainly kind of scary. Yeah, Curse is not really being known for being very good against the blaster ships at zero, I'm afraid. May have been a exactly no. mistake in the, the warp end of that Curse pile, unfortunately. It was interesting the later stages of the match, so, I mean, that... That Slipnir just basically taking absolutely no damage. I think he did get an ESB reload in there, so it must have been 60 seconds where he wasn't really taking that much damage and didn't have an ability to rep. Do you feel that if Chris had focused the fire a little bit better, they might have been able to take the match? Um, well, I think the Chris issue is uh, I noticed that their drones were a little split up over some of Laji and everywhere else. Like they had some EC drones there, which were nice, but I think their biggest issue was. Um, uh, how do I describe this? So like going in on the curse and losing the Astarte was an absolutely huge deal. And I think that the Astarte should have stayed back a little bit and they could have used the Deimos to screen um, at least to maybe try and isolate instead of going in at zero. While they are in blaster ships, yes, you know, Deimos is really, really quick, and a heated Astarte actually is pretty quick too at the MWD. I think they just went all in immediately, and at the end of it, without that, you know, piling onto the curse and losing the Astarte so quickly, I think that was kind of the the biggest, you know, the biggest blunder, the biggest gamble, because after that, I think it, the match was pretty much sealed. Yeah, also if that Astarte down, the links yeah, the will be fast. gone. Yeah, he did dive. I think the curse just went full newts on him, and uh, either through much managed lost links probably. Ex yeah, exactly that too. That's why I was. It was curious to see like EC drones on things, not the curse. Like if they just would have, I think, thrown all the drones on the curse, um, EC drones, and then had Deimos, um, and uh, you know that playing out instead of the Starte just trying to face tank curse newts. I think maybe things could have gone better. Like I said, that opening minutes of the match really decided it all. Like a big gambit to basically try to trade the curse right off. Like I said, the curse moving in at all. This I think should have been a much more cleaner victory for um, uh, the footwork than uh, it was. But I think that was kind of the, the deciding match, the deciding point. What do you guys think of the choice by the Tuskers team to use ECM drones primarily in their drone bay rather than damage drones? Because obviously they've got a very overwhelming DPS focus setup. They've got a great tank, but you know, a Starte, you know, it's that big blast damage. ECM drones seem to be a fairly uh, defensive choice. We ha They were on the, the DPS ships primarily. Whereas, um, do you think if they'd had 
damaged drones, would they have had enough juice to kind of burn through their targets a bit faster, a bit quicker, and pick up a bit of tempo, a bit of momentum? I think it might have affected the outcome quite a bit, actually. If you're going all in on a damage setup like that, it's important you need to be able to kill the primary really quickly, especially when you're faced with like a, a mutant ship like a curse. I think if they killed the curse a lot faster, and then as a result not lost the Astarte, Tuskers could have easily flipped that match and then taken it. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with Bob there. Um, in the situation where they're just basically doing a rush setup, just like, you know, faith nothing DPS to have drones that are not full damage drones, especially considering, you know, they're running a Galente line ships, which, you know, can channel switched. I got the channel switched. to waste them on, you know, like, uh, you know, ECs, stuff like that. I think it was a waste. Um, but again, I really don't like the warp into zero right away, especially when they basically have no control. Um, they could have been totally kited out by the curse if things would have been differently. So I think those would be my only two opinions on that setup. It's important to note that we are using the World's Glide rules here. That means no Tech 2 faction or augmented drones in use whatsoever. So the teams were only able to use Tech 1 damage drones, ECM drones, or logistics drones. How do right. you feel that rule change it was like Tech 2 drones instead of Tech 1 drones? How do you feel that would have affected things? You know, I... I think with the Tech 1 drones, you know, especially seeing like one armor maintenance bots like on the Deimos, I really wonder, how, you know, how much DPS are they actually trying to rep with that? Deimos has a nice resist profile, but considering it was most likely dual rep fit, um, it has no buffer. And I don't know what Tech 1 armor drones are going to do compared to, you know, uh, over T1 warriors. It's kind of a hash up either way. But I would rather see a flight of, you know, like T1 Hobbs, stuff like that coming out of the Deimos, the Starte. Then you know, yeah, T1, T1 the, jams like the armor maintenance was are pure trash. Yeah, so footwork now and not bring that comp again. The slip in your broadsword cursed burst burst comp is now done because in world's collide rules, once you win with a comp, you cannot bring it again. Tusker still has their full lineup though. What do you think the Tusker is going to bring next, guys? Gorski, any thoughts? Uh, I think they're going to go with um. The Absolution on Eros, Confessor, Confessor, Mollus, Comp. What makes you think that, Gorski? What do you say? Uh, what makes you think that, Gorski? I think it's one of their strongest setups, and like they're down one match, they need to win, I think. So, so I just... actually... Sorry, go ahead, Bob. Go ahead, Chesser. Oh, just, thank you. Just, just, just for the viewers at home, uh, I'm just going to read out which comps that both the teams have available from the pool at the moment. So, Ministry of Inappropriate Footwork has a Rook Basilisk Caracal Caracal Celestis comp available. They had a Widow Scimitar Flycatcher Flycatcher Perry's comp, which was banned as part of the World's Collide rules. You do get to ban two of the enemy two of the enemy team's comps before the tournament. They have their Slipnir Broadsword Curse Burst comp, which is, they now cannot use because they want to match with it. Additionally, they also have an Astarte Phobos Execure Heretic Heretic comp. A Drake, Scythe, Sweep, Worm, Serp comp. They have the Damnation, a Neuros, Confessor, Confessor, Mollus comp, which is now one of the bands, two band comps. And Footwork's final comp is a Guardian, Absolution, Sentinel, Blackbird, Ishker. Footwork choosing to use a lot of the World's Collide comps uh, that Camel fielded. Tuskers has Rook, Bliss, Blackbird, Moa, Moa. Uh, also Absolution, a Neuros, Confessor, Confessor, Mollus. They had a Claymore, Scythe, Sweeple, Sweeple, Aries comp that was banned. They also have the same Slipnir Broadsword Curse, Curse comp that uh, Footwork just fielded available. They also have an Eos, Phobos, Execure, Heretic, Heretic comp. And a Starty, Demos, Demos, Navitas, Navitas comp, which they just lost with. But it's still available because they did lose with that. Lastly, the, the Tusker's last end comp was a Gila, Gila, Worm, Worm, Scimitar, which was the, one of the Chinese comps from Worlds Collide. Um, you know, talking about the comps in general, I think the strategy of what comps to use are actually really important in the Worlds Collide, just because I think the Worlds Collide is a really, really slippery slope as far as if you're one match away from victory, pulling out your strongest cards are definitely a better idea. Hey, um, in the situation where you lose the first match, I think, um, like Gorski said earlier, pulling out another really, really strong match to try and get back on even footing is a really, really good idea. Just because I think that in Worlds Collide rules, like losing a single match punishes you harder than by winning it. Just because, you know, the winner's team can just bring out 
their strongest comp right away if they've won two. And if the loser isn't ready for that, or if they guess wrong, you know, they can lose the entire set almost instantly. So it's kind of an interesting uh, thing to think about, you know, like a metaing behind the scenes, not necessarily on the grid. Um, with that being said, I really think that the uh, Tuskers, now that they've lost the first match, should try and pick something that is maybe not their strongest, strongest setup, but maybe close to their second uh, strongest. Um, the one that looks good for me would be like Absolution, Oniero's Confessor, Confessor. You know, it has a little bit more adaptability to it. It might be able to outfly more control comps. And, you know, I think it can still handle some of their other uh, rush setups that the um, Footworks team still has. So I would go for something with a little bit more versatility in it. I certainly wouldn't run the same, um, the uh, Astarte, Deimos, Deimos fit again. So you don't think Tuskers are going to be ballsy and bring the same comp again? You think they're going to go for something different, something slightly more flexible? Would you agree with that, Bothman? I think that, obviously on the back foot, Tuskers are, like, as you say, they just have to bring out what the thing that gives them the most chance to win matches. Because as you say, losing is so, so horrible. And if you lose a match and then you lose a second match, because you went, ah, we'll go with a slightly weaker setup because we think we'll metagame them. But then if you're two games behind, not only is it then so much harder to come back and you've got to put everything on the line so much more, like, team morale is a thing, right? You've got to pay attention. If you're two matches down and it's best of three, uh, sorry, it's, and it's first of three, then, like, you know, you're going to be more nervous, there's more pressure on you, you just want to alleviate anything that's going to make your life just any harder. What do you think about that, Gorski? Uh, looking at subs, like, I think they should bring the same setup. Because it's still sort of like against the E-War, so Blackbird setup and the Rook setups are probably going to lose. And then they have the Astarte Phobos like, kite with rail setups, and I don't think they can kite because it's all that curse fly. And the Drake setups, yeah, I don't know. Ooh, I, think, I, think, I think it's strong against what's remaining. That may be the case, but I what do you we'll think, just Bob? have to see. I honestly think that Tuskers may just bring the same combo in. It does you look do. like, like a fairly good comp. I think it was just perhaps just maybe executed a lot badly. I mean, in the closing matches, at the closing stages of that match, Tuskers had a full boss and a Demos and two Algae Freaks still up, and I believe it was just a Slip Mirror and a Broadsword left for footwork. I mean, Tuskers yeah. surely have had, had it at that. User joined There's no channel. way that that Slip Mirror and that Broadsword should be able to touch those, those Algae Freaks. Right, right, right. Most certainly. I agree. Yes. Um, the the about about the flying issue though is that's kind of what i really liked about these rush setups is for pilots that may not have had or uh time to practice you know the rush setups are you know pretty click you know pretty uh you know easier to execute you know click approach and you know get your tackle on and you know start doing damage make sure you just call the right ships in order uh that's why you know it's like looking back to what i said earlier about flying the confessor setups you know flying confessors is very dangerous because if you make small mistakes in mode switch um you can get you know, dusted in the wind pretty quickly. So that's actually a good point. Yeah, Confessors and Sweeps, because of the, the mode switching on the Tech 3 Destroyers, require a lot of finesse to fly. Do you, What kind of future do you see for Tech 3 Destroyers in future tournaments and alliance tournaments above me? I think that the um, T3 Desis are... Sorry, did you say T3 Desis or T3 Cruisers? Uh, T3 Destroyers. T3 Destroyers, I thought so. Um, so, when they first came out, I, like, said in Skype to a bunch of, like, guys that like tournaments, you're nerfing these before the Alliance tournament, right? Like, right, guys, that you were totally planning to do that? And we kind of seen that the Swipple and the Investor are already in this. They, they provide this kind of very new flavor of ship that you can have. They're probably going to be, you know, everyone's saying they're going to be somewhere between five and seven points, probably six. And just, like, you can do quite a lot of things with them, because they're just so ridiculously good. You can kite super well, we've all seen, like, 10 men being confessors, just be amazing anti-tackle. They can also be made to be ridiculously tanky, so one of the uh, things that you can do in the Alliance Tournament is you used to get a bunch of assault frigates that are fairly tanky, tackle things down, and then get big DPS ships like Vindicators or heavy nuke ships on top of them and just do max, max, max DPS with that tackle component. If you have a tackle T3 Desi, which has a Desi Sig, but then the tank of a cruiser, um, you know, we've, we've seen some of the stats we were saying just today about the uh, Galente Desi that's going to have a ridiculous tank. Um, like that, it's going to provide a lot more things. It's going to make a lot of metas more viable. 
And it just means that each setup you do has to be better against a new set of things as well, because obviously not only if you use them, your opponents can use them as well. So it's really going to mix things up, because I think they are going to be a very, very powerful and very, very useful tournament ship in a lot of different setups. Gorski, the Tech 3 Destroyer in this tournament is pointed at 6 points. Now that's equal to Tech 1 Cruiser. Do you User think that's a, a fair down. points value for them to have? Uh, I think it's kind of a f fair point value. Like in a straight up role, maybe a cruiser is better, but I think the hey, T3 Destroyer is still like. They're so flexible, like, they can do many roles and do many stuff. And like, they're pretty hard to lose if you like, you know what you're doing. Because they have a really high skill cap, so you need good pilots flying them. And, yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah, I think they counter a lot of setups with this, like sharpshooter mode, counters E War and uh, defensive mode with like Tenem and AD that's escape and stuff. So I, I like those ships, they're pretty cool. Cool. Um, I think. Sorry. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. I know uh, it's really great instruction. I'm just letting you know that the teams are, uh, are landing on grid now, so I'm just locking them up and we'll be ready. For, we'll be counting Can you down. Can you Borski? We'll be counting down in a I will. minute or so when I've locked everyone up. So, uh, User joined yeah. your channel. So um, for this for this match, uh, we're going to have Apostle and Chessa uh, commentate. So uh, sorry, carry on with what you're saying, and uh, I'll uh, I'll just interrupt again rudely uh, when we're ready to go. Oh, it's no big deal. I was just saying that you know the the tier three confess uh, tier three destroyers in general, like, they have an okay tank, but in a brawl situation, even with you know ten minute B, if you get a web on you or a two web their ehp is weak under reps it's okay but um the skill cap of piloting really brings an interesting flavor to them because that really is the crutch i think t3ds aren't necessarily too strong but their ability to be versatile is their hidden strength and i think that that really is what makes them kind of enigmas as far as you know comp and everything to go along with that um i think six points is a too low to rate them just because i think in the hands of good pilots uh, with their versatility i think just their flexibility that they can bring to comp lists is a lot for some other you know setups to handle really really focused setups like tinkers or you know rush teams they only do one thing and they do it really really well while you know t3ds kind of ask that jack of all trades kind of deal um bob i know that you were part of a lot of the theory crafting and training with um turn left did you kind of feel the same way or what kind of were your thoughts with the confessor setups that were tried or scrapped or you know rehashed because i know that we did not run tenement ab confessors so what are what, what are your thoughts i i feel that they have their place in the tournament meta for sure i do feel that six points six points makes them viable but not fantastic i'm not sure i would think confessor over like a vexor for example it really depends on what comp that they're used as you can, as you may have seen during Worlds Collide, there was a match where one of the confessors just essentially got void off the field because the logistics cy was you know, cycling on him. Yeah, what happened? But a bunch there? of missiles really just confused. came. In. <laughs> a bunch of serve missiles just came in at once while the, uh... the reps were actually cycling on him, and they just one shot him. They caught him at a moment of high transversal, and he just got annihilated. Unfortunately. So they're versatile and they're flexible. But they are still destroyers, and they're still fairly squishy ships, in my opinion. I don't know what the holdup is. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what? Sorry. Go ahead, Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, footwork are on D-scan. Uh, they should be landing on grid any second, so... Just got a little bit longer. Sorry about that. Yes, sir, can you remote see me? I can. Yes, we, we have our commentator manning up going on here uh, in the system. <laughs> the, the commentator ship meta is pretty strong this year. Yeah, we've I'll zoom in on uh, Varger and Noctis. Um, we've got uh, Chester and his Buzzard and uh, a Galente shuttle as well down here. Like, who, who, who do you, yeah, who do you need me to see, Bo Gorski? Goro shuttle. There you go, mate. I got you. Yeah, it's a very interesting ship choice for the commentators. We all wanted to bring yachts, but sadly, they're not seated on some What's that about? Oh. Alright, so now that they've landed on the grid here, I think there is going to be a huge problem for some of the guys in Footwork, just because the Cerberus, um, with the uh, kite team that they have going on, it's going to be interesting to see if these people pilots can get around what I assume will be an RLML uh, you know, kite snipe serve. Um, it should be interesting. Yeah. So we'll just pass it over from our studio segment guys to the commentators who are going to take you and tell you what the guys have brought. 
Yep, yeah, great. Uh, so the countdown Tuskers is starting seeing... in local now. Sorry. <laughs> so from Tuskers, we're seeing this really weird kind of ECM balls to the wall setup that is a Bazzi, a Rook, a Blackbird, and two mowers. So they're you know, really hoping to just get max jams, jam everything out, and slowly burn things down uh, with the uh, mowers and then just hold reps with the Bazzi. Um, from uh, Footwork, we've got a Serb, a Worm, a Drake, a Scythe, and a Sveeple. Chester, who do you think has come in here with an advantage, if any? First of all, I need to apologize. I did not have my overview set up properly, and the Sveeple is not against the servers. Excuse me. Who do I think has the advantage here? Honestly, uh, looking at both the ships, I am not big fans of MOAs. Um, they, because they warped in first, I'm just going to take a look at them right now. They look to be... Uh, blaster fit. So but blaster moas on the field to kind of peel off for the blackbirds and the rook. I don't see how they're going to be able to stop this people from getting on top of them and causing some serious issues in the back line. Um, but that said, uh, there is a lot of jamming strength there, but it's going to be interesting to me if the worm and the steeple are going to be able to do it. Um, how do you think the drake plays into this? So the Drake obviously is a great platform to provide some links. Um, you can use you know hams, HMLs, rapid lights. I, I'm ass I'm assuming they're going to use rapid lights on it. Here we've got we now see the match having started the mills just burning in straight, straight, straight in. Um, the uh, Bazzi, I'd be interested to see whether or not it has an ECCM fit because if it does, that's going to give. Uh, sorry, wrong team. But uh, the Bazzi is going to be help with keeping them alive. But you know, Blackbirds yeah, and Rooks not going to have much ta much of a tank. It's only it's... there to keep the mills alive. I just want to point out that the Worm and the Zvipul here right off at the beginning, two MOAs have burned 80k and the Zvipuls and everything else just burned completely to the side. Um, I don't know why they're not rushing the Basilisk or the Blackbird on the back, which are completely isolated and by themselves against these MOAs, um, which are now brawling with the Drake. Yeah, uh, I just think that's really interesting. Why do you think that uh, they're staying away and not rushing the back line? Well, I, I'm really not sure with you either. I mean, um, uh, this Bazzi is playing a very, very dangerous game in that it is sitting right at the edge of its max rep range with the mowers. And that if, uh, you know, if a single person on their team had a range damp fitted, as, you know, we see lots of ships being do damps being so strong in the tournament setting, immediately all reps would stop. We now see the Drake taking a lot, lot, lot of damage. It's just about holding reps, but it's slowly beating through now through half shield. But it seems to be holding for now, but there's more drones coming in for the red team, which I've got on my review, which is the Tuskers team. So um, now, now finally, the Sveeple and the Worm are burning in to get on the Rook and you know the Basilisk that are sitting out there. Interestingly enough, the Drake was getting reps from the site intermittently. Jams are being spread equally throughout the, throughout, throughout the enemy fleet. I just can't... I wish I could see who was being jammed and who is currently jammed. I think the site is fully jammed because the Drake is going down really, really quick here. Uh, yeah, and this, I this think is really trading strange. a Drake for nothing. We, we we had a set of acolytes that was on the serve rather than the Drake. We did have split fire from Tuskers for quite a while with those acolytes going to the wrong target. But still, I mean, maybe you just screw up the side, but whatever it is, it's working. That Drake is now in deep, deep, deep structure. It's going to go down. That Blackbird suddenly is now taking a lot of DPS. Is it going to yeah. fall? It looks like you might have uh, catching grabs from the Bazzi. Um, I'm not really sure why a Worm and his people are thinking that they can kill uh, cruisers. Drake's down. They traded for nothing. Uh, can kill these cruisers underneath the Basilisk rep. They should be going for the Basilisk first. But as ships start dying more and more and more, uh, the jam strength and the ability to just spread jams are going to become an, even more of an issue here. Now, yeah. again, these two MOAs are still burning around in the back line, and they've caught the Scythe, which I... I don't know how a MOA catches a scythe, but uh, just but the But apparently it happens. Apparently it happens. Yeah, no, this no, Blackbird no, is going definitely. down. That is going to be uh, just under half the jams off the field. Whoa, big rep there, big rep there going down. Uh, I wonder if the scythe or the Blackbird is going to go down. I'd probably put my money on the Blackbird, but it is tanking like a champ. Yeah, no, as far as I'm concerned right now, I think the Tuskers have complete control of this match. Uh, they've, you know, killed the Drake, and their MOAs just seem to be running in, around in the back line and are going to offer a lot more DPS and ability to kill ships, uh, especially considering all the jams that are going to be still on their side. Oh, uh, that side going down as well. It's now two ships destroyed by the Tuskers. No ships for fancy footwork. It looks like Tuskers will be pulling this back up yeah. to even up the series, which is exactly what, to, what we want to see as many matches as yeah, possible. Yeah. A giant stream of warriors and acolytes going across the field onto the Swipple now. Um, looks like he's going to start taking a lot, lot, lot of DPS. Swipple's known for just being so, so crazy powerful at the moment, but if you've got 20-odd drones on you, there's not much you can do even then. 
Yeah, most definitely. This people uh, is going to slowly, slowly break down here. I think it looks to me like it is MSE fit with buffer, which would make sense with the Logi on the field, and it's going down pretty handily here. Um, I really think it was just uh, a poor calling to try to go after the Blackbird right away. I know the jams are important, but you need to take the Logi down first when you only have a Speeple and a Worm for DPS, and they're just not going to be able to break yeah, the that... Blackbird. With, and this people's going down here now. With so many ships now, they just don't have a chance of breaking the, those basilisk rafts. It's only a serb and a worm. The worm now getting brought down as well. Looks like it's been tackled down. It's going to start taking a ton, ton of DPS as the uh, freaks start going on them. And, you know, before the match started, we were, I think, I think a word is skeptical of the Mala Blackbird Rook Basilisk setup, but it is won a match quite convincingly here without losing a single ship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. I think they're going to probably have a clean sweep here. But with the convincing win, that being said, you know, I think the Drake setup that the uh, that footwork had, I think, was extremely poorly executed. Extremely poorly. I cannot stress enough how Moas burned, like full blaster fit brawling Moas burned 40 to 50k before the Sveeple and the Worm were really doing anything. I'm not sure if they missed the go counter. I'm not sure what's going on. But um, those Moas did a lot of work, and the Drake going down so quickly without being traded for anything because you know the basilisk and our blackbird were basically just sitting by themselves in the backfield you know that's very strange to me um i wonder what was going on in their comms uh, i'd be really interested to know if it it's possibly some kind of weird fitting thing i wasn't actually watching the max speed of the mowers maybe they're obviously they're fit with a good bit of tank but how many speed models do they have because you think oh i'm in a scythe i'm never going to be caught by a mower and then suddenly it's barreling down upon you like i didn't think mowers could go that fast maybe it could be something right. along those lines it'd be really interesting to see the fittings that were decided upon here by the tuskers team Oh yeah, most definitely. Once the Worm and the uh, Zvipol decided to leave the Scythe and go after the backline, um, I think that was a decision made too late, and just leaving the Scythe alone to be pushed away by two Moas, you know, that Worm and Zvipol were essentially just walking into th to, you know, a Lodgy ship and two cruisers, which alone, I don't know if that's the best idea. I just, uh, it'd be interesting to see um, the uh, voice calls on uh, the um, on the Tuskers side versus the footwork side just to see the differences and you know what was going on it just seemed uh, like a massive outplay to me just waiting now for the serve to finally uh, bite the dust obviously moa blasters aren't too great against kaldari tech 2 but uh, oh, his xlasb his xlasb tank should be running out shortly and with that that's going to be an absolutely clean clean sweep for the tuskers uh which will bring this to a one-to-one -one, which is actually really really exciting for us commentators and of course you guys the viewers um i wish i had an ability to look at this match again but there there goes uh the cerberus uh, very very slowly finally after an agonizingly long xlasb fight but congratulations to the tuskers for bringing it up to 1-1 one, one, um, bringing it back for a little bit of commentary with bob and everyone else yeah thanks for that um yep so bob will handle another chat segment while we ask the teams to reship as quickly as possible um so the next batch will be about 10 to 15 minutes time user left your channel so that's one one guys tuskers one footwork one Tuskers can no longer bring that ECM setup. So, User left your did you guys channel. feel that was mostly about User execution left your that channel. I really do. I yeah, really do. I, I'd have to agree with that. I'm, I'm way in sure a little bit, Tusker. Like, Bob, could they, Bob, what could they even see? kill the Lodgy there? Like, if they were on the Lodgy there, Moas would get tackled and they would probably have died, died before they could kill a the Lodgy there. Uh, what I, do feel mean? Like I, I don't think they had enough DPS just... there. Oh, on that comp to yeah. kill the the Batsy? Kill like a Batsy before the Moas got tackled and killed like one big ship. Well, it was interesting that the Moas basically rammed the Drake right off. Uh, yeah, Drake, Drake was sitting still. Right, exactly. So that, that was interesting because the Drake could have held the Moas at least in some regard. Moas aren't very fast and uh, just with Basilisk, Rook, Blackbird in the back lines, um, it's surprising to me that the Scythe didn't move over with Zvipal Worm to uh, start, you know, really doing the hurt. The Cerberus can just basically fly wherever it wants in the grid because its range is extreme, so it can always be applying. Um, you know, I think that they did have the DPS because really, if you get outside of range with the Cerb, it can only really get jammed by the Basilisk, but it's a hack, excuse me, get jammed by the Blackbird with its range bonus, but it's a hack. So you have to remember that. It's got a nice signal. It's got a kinetic um, damage strength. bonus though. 
I know it's got kinetic damage bonus, but at the end of the day, you know, it's just a Bazzy. And if it has 250 worm DPS on it, roughly, uh, or 200 worm DPS plus this Veeple, you know, sitting at zero, which will be around 400 EM, you know, that's, you're still looking at 700, 800 DPS at least, which is a lot for a Basilisk, I think. So I don't know about you guys, but I didn't see that Drake move at all. He might have been yeah. bait fit. He might have had no prop mods. What do you guys think? Yeah, that could have been a good tactic, like hold a no one then swing around to load you, like Shizu said. Like I think that's like the only way they could win. I think the only Bob, problem it's, is it's... that the people and the worm didn't commit quickly enough. If they went, because yeah. they were breaking the black blackbird, they could have killed the blackbird. If that blackbird had died, it would have swung the match, in my opinion, because the ECM would yeah. have been much less. You could have possibly then killed the root because there's much less shams. Yeah, that's that's kind of the thing about ECM setups, and I know that we were talking about it earlier. Um, but e if the team fighting ECM starts losing ships, the jams, the oppressive jams, become worse and worse and worse because there's less ships that needed to be spread against them. Um, while on the flip side, a single jam ship goes down, and you have huge issues. It's kind of an interesting fight. Uh, Bob, when you said earlier that the Drake was just a bait setup um, and wasn't moving at all, I, I kind of want to agree with you, but he seemed to drop really, really fast to me. Uh, do you not think so? Or maybe there was a DC or something? I'm not sure. I don't think he was uh, dropping all that quickly, to be honest. He did have two blaster mods on him. I would have expected him to drop a lot faster. It might have just been no prop mod bait tanks. Like, I'm really not sure. Is there any chance we can get the kill mail local, guys? Yeah, that would actually be really cool if they were listening. Well, Blossom always do like 600 DPS when you got them like right on top of you, so it's, it's a lot of But actually, it's not, it's, not fair. it's not fair for them to ask the Blink the Drake, because they can use that comp again. So oh, you're right, right, that. right. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, he looks, oh, he look at the Whoopsie. damage control model on that Serb. What is that? Yeah, it's a new damage control. It's terrible. Yeah, they changed the damage control. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of it either. Yeah, I don't know. So that, I don't that was like it. a damp Drake. It did have a prop mod, and it was Lynx as well. That's a very interesting fit. I, uh... I don't agree that much with that fitting, um, just because the, the, the Drake, to, I, I don't think the Drake is a very strong ship to begin with, um, but using the AT setting, if I was forced to use it, um, definitely a brawling ship, and I would want its mid-slots to definitely be a, you know, scram web, um, something to really hold people down, you know, going with a no-point Drake, uh, especially with HMLs, which have horrible damage application to begin with, is an interesting thought. Uh, what do you think, Apathy? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, HMLs, I was about to ask Gorski, because we all know his love of HMLs. Um, it's got a nano on it, and, you know, it's obviously designed to be able to go at some speed and move around, but at zero speed, you know, use your ship. Like, it has a bunch of modules. You had an MWD. If you put a module on a ship, Probably you were planning on using it, so use it. Yeah, Bob, like course, HMLs in thoughts? general. HMLs in general are pretty horrible at applying damage. Like you couldn't kill a Lodgy with that or like apply any damage to it. Yeah, having HMLs on a Drake, I guess, especially against pretty much an all Kaldari team is kind of your worst nightmare. I mean nostalgia points, very, very high. Skill and like you know, winning the match points, not so much. I guess yeah, risky. I like, if they brought yeah. back the Drake 7 and that links, it will be even worse. So, I don't know. Yeah, I also like, think again, it's an interesting choice to drop uh, LSEs for damps. That, uh, <laughs> I think that hurts the Drake even more than it should be. It was again, weakly tanked. ECM comps, like I said earlier, they're all like House of Cards. So, if a team brings a lot of ECM, then obviously you spread the jammers over the whole team. Two ECM chips in a, a five-man format doesn't mean you do have a theoretical chance of possibly perma jamming the whole enemy team. But as you lose either ECM ships, well, uh, as you lose ECM ships, your chances of winning diminishes. But as you kill enemy ships, your chances of winning greatly increase because you've got way less jam targets. Yeah, and actually, that's a, that's a good point to bring up too, just because the um, the Worms people are, and with the Scythe, those three ships in general have very, very low signal strength. Um, so it was actually maybe a good call to kill the Drake earlier, just because, you know, with it down, considering not moving seemed like a juicy target, you know, a lot of the signal strength that the um, that they had was basically just gone. They had a lot of light ships there, or Minmatar hulls, which aren't known for their signal superiority at all. It's important to note, though, this people is very good against DCM setups. Because it does get the 100% bonus to... It's very uh, weak when it's in that mode, though. Like, you can kill yeah. it. Yeah, that's the problem. 
you have to you have to be out of um, target. You have to be in defensive mode or speed mode. Uh, sniper mode, I think, is a poor option in the brawling people, but that's definitely a situation or thing to th uh, brought, bring up. Interesting to see if we could see the first person view of the Svipel pilot while he was essentially only getting shot at by a Blackbird. Was he in defensive or was he in sniper mode to help fight off the Blackbird jams? It'd be interesting to see. Well, when, at the point where he wasn't getting shot and he was on top of the Blackbird, he should definitely have been in sharpshooter mods just for the better tracking yeah, definitely. and for the uh, essential strength. I mean, Blackbird jams, potentially, if the Blackbird has multi-specs, it depends if he has multi-specs or ratios. If he has ratios, then the Blackbird has a good chance of jamming the people regardless if he's in the sharpshooter yeah, yeah. mode or not. And then you have the Rook as well, so... But if you have multi-specs, the Sweeple, I think, has got a good chance of rocking off jams and applying damage to that Blackbird. So is, uh, you only need to drop one like damp him, well, yam him once and you can wrap up for full. So yeah, it's true. It's true. It's just un unfortunate that you know the worms people uh, weren't back there earlier, or maybe had a little bit more support. Uh, so now with everything being tied one one, um, what are everyone's thoughts are uh, of next comps or interesting comps that they're excited to see, or comps that you would think would be particularly strong? that um, Tuskers and then of course Footwork could bring. So I want to see the Absolute Guardian Sentinel Blackbird Ishker from Footwork. Because it's just like a group of ships that you wouldn't necessarily put in a box together. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think it's a natural thing to think about. I've got an Abso, okay, we've got some you know, tracking bonus, command ship, very strong, got some links. Guardian, makes sense, going for the armor tank. Sentinel. Who uses right. the Sentinel? Okay, some TDs. <laughs> like, Okay, Blackbird, a okay, bit of ECM. ECM, historically very strong, full night in favour for dance, but you know, we're, we're liking the ECM today, at the very least. And then an Ishker, one of the one of the least used of the Assault Frigates. So, I... if, you had, if you had to pick a four-point ship for, instead of that Ishker, what would you pick off me? I mean, it, it would depend on what I was trying to do with the setup, right? So, um, I mean, obviously the Ishka, it can apply its DPS from quite far away, so it's kind of like a, an Assault Frigate Worm in, in many aspects. Um, it's got nice MWD bonus, but blah 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 blah. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, from that comp, I don't really, I, I just can't intuit what they're trying to do with those support ships. Like, what's, like in every comp, in every Fleet Doctrine even, Eve, there's this kind of core idea of we're trying to do this in this way, in this style. And it may just be because I'm an idiot. I just do not see it with this comp, but that's why I yeah. want to see it. When I, I was game. really gutted that we didn't get to see that in the Worlds Collide, um, because I was exactly like you, trying to figure out what the hell, how the hell you fly that. Like, and I was really gutted that right. you know, Camel didn't bring it. Maybe it was just a troll setup, and they could they never actually practiced it. I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, when when I look at a setup like that, I look at the Abso, which you know with pulse lasers is going to have like 35 plus range. It's going to have great tracking. Obviously, it's a brawler. Obviously, it just wants to get on top of you. It's going to be have the links. It's going to be your damage. The Guardian there, Lodgy, super important. The Sentinel is a ship that has a lot of mid slots, and if it gets anywhere near your Lodgy, your Lodgy has no more cap. It breaks your Lodgy. It may not kill it, but the enemy Lodgy doesn't exist anymore. And Blackbird is there to help with jamming as far as other logic because of the absolution going in, brawling. And Ishker, I think, is there to try and get a scram web, try and pull things in for the absolution to eventually catch in and get a heavy tackle on. I think that when I look at that fleet, that's that's what I see. So why an Ishker over something like a, a, a Retribution or a Vengeance, it's one of the MRAFs with you know the resist bonus to the tank? Well, the, the comms a bit light on damage, so you've got an Ishker that does have uh, flexibility with drones. It can apply damage at range with drones, and it can apply damage close in as well to the drones with blasters. Yeah, yeah. I think Whereas that, a, a Retribution that's really is has got a severely limited amount of mid-slots as well. It's only got two mid-slots. I fondly remember the, the good old one mid-slot Retribution and one mid-slot Coercer going around before they buffed it years ago. But yeah, yeah the, no. the Vengeance just doesn't do a lot of damage either. I mean, it's got rocketness, but even with you know four bonus rocket launchers and rage rockets, it's, it's not really doing that much damage. Just And rockets don't really apply all that well, in my opinion, either. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to note that the Sentinel and the Ishker both have flights of light drones. While they will only be T1, yes, they do have the flights, uh, which allow them to be much, much more, have, have more utility than, say, you know, a ship like the Vengeance that Bob was talking about earlier. So that's kind of when I look at that fit, 
or that setup. That's that's kind of what I think. That's kind of what I see. Um, we just talked about the footwork guys for a while. Is there anything on the Tuskers side that you know anyone is really excited to see or want to want to look at? I'm kind of curious to see Tusker's take on the, the Confessor comp camo hat for Worlds Collide. It uh, uh, supplements the uh, the damnation for an Absolution. Absolution's on six ship kinda... though, like 700 DPS with beams, a lot of DPS. Yeah, medium beam lasers, like, I don't know if we can segue a little bit and talk about medium beam lasers. I think they're way underappreciated on TQ than they are. Like, they, they I, are I think fantastic they're system. really, really, really strong, but with the caveat that on a ship that doesn't have the beam optimal bonus, like like the Legion when it's in laser setup, is that its damage falls off at range really, really fast. I was looking at doing a um, Absolution and Astarte fleet comp, and obviously the Astarte gets a you know, nice, nice big fall off bonus. Um, like when you're still kind of sub 50, sub 40, the Absolution's damage is amazing, but as soon as you get beyond that, with all the tracking it has, it just peters out really, really, really quickly. So there's going to be changes in the next expansion with uh, Command Ships and Battle Cruisers, giving them a little bit more warp speeds. And Command Ships in particular, I believe, are going to be the same warp speed as Cruisers. That's How do correct. you guys feel this uh, increases their viability on TQ? I think if there was a way to make Snuffbox even more smug and happy, they found it. I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> think that Command Ships at this time are in a fairly okay place. I don't think that saving them a single rig slot for a hyperspatial is going to make or break them. At the end of the day, they, for the most part, are slower ships um, with good damage and nice tank. Uh, and I think that that's the deal there. As far as battle cruisers, I think that this warp speed change will do absolutely nothing for them because the main problem with battle cruisers isn't necessarily their warp speed. I mean, yes, that is very annoying, and yes, that is a problem, but it's not what's hampering them on the grid. You know, on the grid, they're very slow. Their damage is comparable to cruisers in many cases less, and they have little to no projection without long range weapons. Um, what are your thoughts? I think it'll. I think it'll definitely bring back attack cruisers into. Viability, um, you know, you're sniping tornadoes and stuff like that. I think you'll see more of those again with the warp speed buff. But yeah, the others, no, <laughs> I can't see them being used as anymore with that with that buff. I took out a Myrmidon fleet today, and I full a Harbinger and Hurricane fleet. I only I was I like I was like, hey, I'm bringing out battle cruisers. Nobody else does battle cruisers, and then I fought a battle cruiser fleet. It's like straight out of the time what? machine. Yeah. yeah the, other, the other day we were roaming around about our home system in Losec, and we happened upon a, I think a 30 or 40 man kitchen sink logistics and battle cruiser fleet. And it was just glorious. I had maybe 15 lodges or something, like mixed lodges, like armor and shield lodges, executors, ospreys, amuroses, basilisks, and I had like tons of hurricanes, harbingers, and all this crazy sink stuff. Like and when just, I start. <laughs> Sorry. And, we just took out like three Macarials and Gulas and just fought that stuff. And there was just like a, a time machine going back, back a few years ago when just dominate stuff with Macarials and that was always oh, so awesome. Like I, I started PvPing and getting into Eve like the end of twenty twelve. Like that was a time where you roamed in kind of like shield battle cruisers and stuff. Like I had this shield worm fit that was awesome and I loved. It didn't do any damage beyond like five K, but it did like twelve hundred damage up close. Like it's I think people are just doing it and they're returning, not because they're the correct shit for the job, but just because people love them. Like, BCs are and really cool fights. and they're iconic, and they will get fights. Like, if you take out a bunch of battle cruisers with T1 Logi, no one is, like, afraid of that. Everyone has the tools to bring out some kind of fight. Like, you can fight that with a bunch of assault frigates, you probably won't try to number them a bit. You could fight that with a T1 cruiser gang if you just got like, a pull more, like even then, battle cruisers can kind of can kind of like like it's just got this really wide engagement profile that they're really strong in their own way, but they're also not intimidating. Like dropping, I don't know, like say fighting like ten sacrileges with four guardians. Like nobody wants to engage that. BCs are fun. You want to engage them. You believe you can win. You're willing to take that fight. So, also with the changes coming in the next expansion, the changes to warp speed rigs, they're going to lose their 5%. It's a really harsh bonus, actually. 
with maximum skills it's five percent of your total cpu amount on your ship which is a really harsh penalty and that's been changed to signature radius gorski can you tell us a little bit about how that's going to affect the battleship roaming in tq oh that's like the it's a huge change it's gonna probably make roaming battleships like way better than they are now because a lot of them like you can roam with them but you need two or three warp street rigs like not kill yourself while you're doing it and uh, yeah right now like it, you give up the 20 percent or whatever 15 from the shield rig and you get like a cpu penalty so now you're just gonna get like uh, a signature penalty it's like i guess the zero zero blobbers hate it but for like a smaller gang guys it's, super, it's like a best change ever yeah, I, I think it was a really elegant way how they added signature radius because uh, hey, the big ships don't give a shit because you know an MWD battleship is like 2k sig, and you know for smaller ships it's obviously it's a big deal so you don't want to you know make it easier to fit hyperspatials for those horrible interceptors and all those other small shit. So I, I really liked it. it was an elegant it was an elegant change. Um, it was it was good. Great stuff. So like... you're gonna be roaming more in your pulse episodes and stuff. Yes, sir. You're gonna have any videos incoming? My pulse absolution. If only yeah, I can fly it. I've got my uh, oh, no, 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 that I'm working uh, on. Sorry. Oh, my APOC, yeah, I'm gonna have some uh, good old pulse and APOCs coming in, coming at you. Uh, it's down the pipe of things I need to still do. Yeah, we did a battleship roam last night. User joined them. Um, yeah, how, how, how'd that go, Gorski? <laughs> it ended pretty bad. Rapier feathering people with battleships. Okay, you guys. Tried, tried. Uh, so Tuskers have just brought onto field. The comp that they lost to in the first match. Yeah, we're just about to kick off the next match. I'm just locking people up um, for this match. I think we go back over to me and Bob to commentate. If you guys are there, I'm oh, just going to ask uh, Denisor when you see the last um, footwork ship land, if you could start the countdown local for me. A little there now. Yeah, so Tuskers have brought the that they lost to in the first match, which is the Slipnir Broadsword Curse, Burst and Burst. We have the Slipnir and the Broadsword at 10, we have the Curse in at 30, and we have Logi Frigs in at 50. So, slightly more sensible than maybe Footwork was in the first match with uh, this kind of comp, but it's pretty interesting. It looks like Footwork is going to go with the Phobos Astarte uh, Double Heretic an Executor comp that uh, Camel Empire used in Worlds Collide. It's going to be interesting to see how well that is going to go for them. Yeah, um, one of the footwork guys walked in at 70 kilometers because he's in a repi ship and he didn't realize that it was a 50k limit. So um, he's just building in now, um, so almost ready. Um, so De Dan, do you want to start the countdown now? So yeah, the, the whole footwork team in at max range, you know, if that executor you know, does approach quickly, you guys going to have to come a little bit closer, because that's not really fair. Yep. And when the line term it's setting, you can only warp to the beacon at 50 maximum. Uh, there has only been a couple instances where people have warped at a uh, worse range in the Alliance tournament, or in uh, any of the SELs. What happens if you do move at a range uh, in the official rules, then it tends to happen, you get moved to zero. But I don't think we're going to be as harsh with uh, that poor Executor pilot, because that would be an instant loss to footwork. He's 30 seconds on the countdown, he's going to make it in, I think he's going to be legal, <laughs> should we say, by the time... Uh, yeah, okay, he's in range now, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, they're all at range. Um, I thought the blast... I thought... The okay, so it's the kiting comp, yeah, okay, so um, those light missile heretics are brilliant, we use them quite a lot, I flew for the Tuskers last year, um, hence the connection, um, and the volley on them is really, really effective at anti-tackle, I think those bursts are really going to struggle from those uh, light missile comps, five seconds on the uh, clock now, and the match is about to get underway. Yep, this match is going to end underway, I think the heretics are going to go right for these straight from the off, and I imagine the railgun ships well, I imagine it probably is real gunships on the footwork side are going to go straight for these bursts as well. So both teams moving. It looks like the Tuskers are moving in towards footwork. Footwork is kiting out a little bit. Damage applied to Zern and the Heretic. Taking yep. a lot of shield damage there. Yeah, I can't see what the damage is coming from User just yet. I guess it was. Um, it looks like the uh, Tuskers are brawling straight in and it kind of feel like... Um, the footwork team are not kiting hard enough. 
Yeah, Use Tuskers is here. brawling in a little bit. Damage applied to the Johnny in the burst and to the Curse of Solomon Shura. That burst is going into armor, though. It does look like uh, those heretics are doing a number on that burst. Yeah, half armor now. I it's receiving think... reps, slowly getting reps off Battle Dog, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. Maybe it's going to be volleyed through. Um, yeah, these little frigates, they've got such small amounts of HP that the big railgun volleys will really hurt them. I'm just looking at the ranges now. That Excura went right up to the boundary, and I'm a little bit worried he's going to go over. We haven't had a situation where a ship has boundaried yet, but I did tell both team captains that if a ship boundaries, the only way I can fairly stop the match is if it instantly disqualifies the ship that boundaries first. Okay, he's, he's pulling back now, that's fine. Bendy and the Poe boss taking a lot of damage. He's hard tackled he can't pull range to get any dps out of those rail guns and i think he's gonna yeah that, that full boss is taking a hell of a lot of damage here babe. but that that curse that curse on the tusker side has taken two chunks of armor damage now I... uh full boss got in the structure it looks like it's going to be a curse for a full boss trades both teams down a ship oh yeah i think you're right i don't think that's such a horrible trade um silly is their fc so that's oh gonna that hurt. curse stabilized oh. now it's receiving reps that sliver of structure like two percent structure remaining on that he curse. really need 11 percent shield now he's oh, pulling he's it back stabilizing that curse wow looks like there's not going to be a trade if tuskers can keep this up and it does look as if they will take this match three percent hull look at that wow okay so silly um he did a similar thing in in a in a um, SCL match, I remember he got a very, very, very low structure and managed to survive. Um, he's actually pulled back. He's absolutely fine now. So they've got, they can save those no those loots for later. Um, Nors and the Execra, hard tackled now. He's got a lot of damage going on to him uh, by the Slepner and the, uh, I know the Broadsword's in a different area. So the Slepner's killing the Excura and the Broadsword, oh, the Excura goes, uh, is on top of the Astarte. So all of the footwork team uh, ships now are had well they, they they cleverly split out and, and hard tackled all of the footwork teams they couldn't kite very efficiently uh the heretics have got more freedom but um their damage is not going to be enough i don't think yeah sully stabilized now johnny in the burst is taking a, a bit of damage here it doesn't even if uh tuskers lose both the logistics frigates at this point i think tuskers has this comfortably yeah um uh, that astarte already in half armor Heretic taking a bit of damage. The Astarte is repping, so the curse may not be in range yet. The curse is way off. It doesn't look like he's in range to apply those newts yet. No, he's scared. The he's scared. Is he's scared. <laughs> um, he's take, he's with, take... with no with no logistics left for the work team. That Astarte is going to go down, and with yep. those links gone, those heretics are going to be killed by the, the broadsword and the slipper. Frank's danger approaching the edge of the boundary dangerous position now as they started pops and the heretic wow i missed that uh, heretic getting killed by the broadsword by looks fit Her frank is just going to the edge of me now he's going to go out the boundary but it's going to make yeah. a little difference anyway so frank, frank is frank is out the boundary he doesn't care uh, he's going to save yeah. his uh, ship even though it's worthless on cc um so the match goes he's still fighting um hopefully he hears me now or someone pokes him and tells him that the match is over um if that curse had died sully do you think that the match would have gone differently? Well, if they'd managed to trade for this properly, it would have, it might have affected the outcome of the match. If the curse was the linchpin, especially against the blaster setup. What we kind of saw there was almost a rerun of the, the very first match. It was basically Newt's, Newt's and uh, Mimitar Rush versus uh, a close range hybrid setup. Yeah. So those Newt's do play a big factor. Curse obviously control in quite a lot of the fields. Wow, 3% hull. He's got brown trousers. Bob, I'm going to pass it back to you if you guys want to um, chat about that match while I uh, poke the captain to get ready for the next one. It's 2-1 to the Tuskers. Will Footwork claw back another one? Will it go all the way to five matches? Or will the Tuskers wrap it up in the next match? We'll find out in about 10 to 15 minutes or so. All right, guys. So that's another to the flawless victory there from the Tuskers. Very, very close to not being a flawless victory. Kirsten, 3% structure. What do you guys think about that? I think it was. Uh, I think it was absolutely very, very well played by Tuskers. I really am happy to see them coming back really hardcore after that first loss. Um, and overall, it was it was a great play. Their ability to just run right at the um, footwork team, catch a Phobos right off the bat. I mean that that you just can't let that happen. And Suleiman's piloting, staying at range with the curse this time, getting the newts on, and knowing just when to pull range. And thank God those Logi frigs were on the ball, you know, pulling out like that. Really nice, really nice to see on their team. Good communication.
yeah, important to note, guys, 31 structure hit points left, and that's 31. Like a stray quick one, light drone could have killed that curse. What do you think, Apoff? Okay, Apoff's not here. What do you think, Gorski? Um, like, I'm not sure if the curse would have died if it would have made a difference, to be honest. No, it definitely would not have. Yeah, because they had slept and brawls towards straight on their lot here afterwards. Like, it got tackled instantly. And, like, they're running a kite setup, you can't, like, get any ship tackled. So do you guys feel it was just basically down to execution again? I yeah. think they got pretty hard counter with setups as well. You have, like, a rush with links versus a kite setup. The, yeah, I think, the think thing any is... setup that has newts versus, like, a higher base setup is, is almost always going to win. Unless you yeah. seriously fuck up. I I think that it would have been more interesting if the heretics could have gone after their logic frigs right away and taken them down. Um, yeah. uh, heretics, I think, could have done that a lot, a lot, lot better. Uh, there really isn't anything as far as you know that I could see on the grid for a reason why um, the heretics had to be so town. afraid there. I mean, just stay out of thirty-seven off the curse in a broadsword and slept near have no projection. So I'm not sure where the bursts just weren't dead immediately. Yeah, I expected a lot more from those heretics in that map. I mean, I'm surprised those bursts did manage to stay alive. Two heretics should be able to kill uh, a burst in almost all situations. Right, I mean, a Confessor with CN missiles is shooting around 60 plus K, so they have a 30 to 40 K buffer off the curse. I mean, you know, it, I just, it's very, very strange. Um, I think that that was a big, a big... Um, Gaff, and I also think having uh, Phobos tackled so early by the Slepnir was also uh, a really, really big deal there. You know, if the EOS could have gotten on the Slepnir first and then just let the Phobos sit back just a little bit, um, I think that would have been good. On the other hand, though, there was really good piling by the Exqueror, uh, in a sense, pulling range um, and getting to 121 off the beacon, you know, and then just coming right back in. I don't know how far away he was from being able to land reps, but I mean, that's a nice little bit of piloting there to stop your ship 4k from the beacon. Yep, good play by the Tuskers there. Sully again proving that, you know, nothing can really kill this guy. During the, the second Neo tournament, he pulled something equally out in the Sentinel. So a similar Newton ship, apart, except it's a frigate. And he did survive and win as the match, basically, in like 2% structure there. I think he still has that ship to the trophy. Oh, yeah. So 2-1 no, I... so up for the Tuskers, guys. Do you think the Tuskers can take it 3-1, uh, or do you think Footwork can pull one back? I think, I think they're going to take it 3-1, and I only say that because they still have um, uh, some really strong uh, compositions left. And I think that the piloting skill that I've seen out of Tuskers and their execution is, uh, minus the first match, has really been turned up and onto another level. So if they can fly, for example, their Confessor set up well, I think you know they could take it in three. So out of the, the remaining Tuskers comp, they do have the Absolution and Eros Confessor, Confessor and Mollus comp available. They also have the Eos, Phobos, Executor, Heretic, Heretic comp available. And then the Asarti, Demos, Demos, Navitas, Navitas comp that they have left. Footwork are only missing their Slipping Your Broadsword, Curse, Burst, Burst comp. So what do you think, guys, think both teams are going to bring next match? I think they're definitely going to bring the Absolution on Eros, Confessor Cell. Uh, the one with Heretics, like, they don't have any Frig subs left that you can really, like, take use of them, I think. And the Demos, like, I don't know. I think the Absolution is a better, like, safer way to end it with. Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, Footwork has to pull out all the stops here, so um, they need to pick whatever they feel is their best comp and their ability to uh, best execute the comp. Um, because I think Execution has killed Footwork mostly in the last two matches, more so than it has been against you know uh, ship type or ship type. What are your thoughts, Bob? And honestly, in the next match, a funny feeling we might see a mute comp from Footwork. Because the way I rationalize this, that of all the Tuskers remaining comps, they are very, very kind of cap heavy. You've got the Absolution needs cap, Confessors need cap, the Phobos, Eos needs cap, and obviously you've got the, the Blaster Rush that they started with, the Astarte, Demos, Demos, and I needs cap as well. Unfortunately, their, their Cursed Comp is now banned because they won the first match with it. So potentially we could see from Footwork in the next match, in my opinion, the Absolution, Guardian, Sentinel, Blackboard, Ishkur comp. Uh, that could be getting used in the next match. Uh, I'm not sure that like a sentinel is gonna get murdered by confessors. 
end TDs. Yeah, it depends on like the piloting. But... Yeah, it, it definitely depends on on fit as well. So Sentinel sounds TDs like an easy ship to fly. Should yeah, with with TDs or even dams, it should just be able to break the confessors. But um, yeah, again, uh, that requires execution and yeah, a good execution. And of course, the confessor pilots, you know, maybe making a mistake in the early stages of the match, not being able to just snipe it right away. Um, I personally think that. But work will hopefully stay away from the Abso Guardian Sentinel Blackbird Ishkur setup because that requires a lot of finesse of when to go in, when to pull back, and the Sentinel Blackbird pilots need to be on the ball helping the Abso and the Ishkur get things done on the grid, um, which I think would be risky to take. Gorski, if you were the footwork team captain, what comp would you bring next for potentially the last match? Oh, that's a hard one because like I don't think they have like anyone super like super strong left. I guess like uh like this, I would have brought out the Slepner Broadsword one, but this band, it looks like he will not really, so... Yeah, we could potentially maybe see the, the Rook Basilisk comp from me. Yeah, I was thinking about that, like maybe, but I'm not, not, like, I'm not sure about that setup. Do you think we'll possibly see the return of either the Astarte comp or the Drake comp? We, they had no, 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 those are horrible. I hope it's not the Drake <laughs> I hope they don't yeah, bring no, the, not the Drake comp. <laughs> 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 I think I saw. And, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's either I... Rook comp or Absolution comp, I think. Hey guys, I brought my Drake to a tournament match. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that that fit in general, that setup, I just really hate. I really hate that setup. Um, good on the Tuskers for not banning it. Um, it was. <laughs> it was uh, my think, idea. I think, I think, Hold my hands up. It was my idea. <laughs> I think. I think. I think it was a good call. I think that was a good call. Yeah. Well, it's no, got I'm, Drake, I'm... which is crap, and then it's got this Veeple, which is OP, right? So it must be a good comp. Oh, yeah. Fans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's Veeple. I, I really think that people overestimate the T3Ds. Um, they can be strong, but I, at the end of the day, their EHP is very weak, and with a web on or a nude on, they just, like, poof. But yeah, and, like, they've already lost with that setup, so Tuskers know, like, the entire setup, like, fittings and stuff. Yeah, that's another thing to point out, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so this is quite a lot of. Uh, Quite. I was gonna say the uh, yeah the the Tuskers know exactly what the set the things of the footworks are because uh, I even, I did tell them that we were basically gonna take camel setups and try and do our best with them. Uh, these guys at footwork are not the most experienced pilots. Um, they've flown in two alliance tournaments, but most of the pilots are from the New Corp, um, uh, the Red Circle Inc, who are really really keen, but they haven't actually got any. Well, a little bit of tournament experience between them, so I think I think that's showing up in execution. But um, and I think Tuskers are just taking it uh, on that. But I think yeah. I think the I think the camel comps are really strong. So I hope hopefully that Footwork can use the strength of those comps to pull one, pull another pull, pull another match back. So can you tell us a little bit about the two teams, be? So um, Tuskers are a low sec pirate corp who are pretty famous, I'd say. Um, probably one of the most um, well-known sort of um, they've been around forever and Sully kind of really promotes um, solo and sort of solo PvP for the most part and they do a little like two three man gang, gang rooms really focused on maxing out um, what they can get out of solo PvP and bringing those skills together a group of good solo PvPers together um, they did they came fourth in the last tournament um, so they kind of they took uh, like 15 20 solo pvps ran them together and then came up with a, a really good team so um you don't have to fly as a team constantly on tq all the time um to get together and practice for an alliance tournament i think that's quite important thing to note for people who are maybe in small corps thinking oh i'd love to have a go at tournament but you know we've only got like four or five guys active get get in get in an alliance with another couple of corpses that are a lot similarly like-minded um, and get practicing and you might be able to pull it off um, yeah with well, the prize structure being expanded this year you know smaller teams like it used to be basically the winning team and the second place team basically got all the prizes and all the unique AT ships and etc but the prize pool is being extended and I believe it's going to be extended even more this year because uh, you get one to fourth place do get tournament prize ships like it's super rare mm -hmm. chameleon and the whiptail from uh, last year Tuskers did win some of those. I believe the price pool is going to be extended even more this year, according to the conversations I had with Gargan and what Gargan was saying at the esports round table at FanFest this year. But can you tell us a little bit more about Footwork, today? Um So, yeah, um, I fly with Footwork. Hey, um, and we um, 
Uh, we base out of a C5 wormhole, and we spend most of our time roaming null sec. Actually, we don't do a lot of null, uh, wormhole PvP uh, as it crops up. We do it, but um, yeah, we make, spend most of the time in sort of five to ten man gangs roaming null sec, which is a lot of fun. I think it's the most fun um, you can get out of Eve. Uh, yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> Um, in terms of oh, in terms nice. of, in terms of tournament pedigree, so that, um, we've done two alliance tournaments and two SCLs and one Neo so far. Nice, Sounds very nice. Good. Yeah, no, I think that's really exciting to hear of you know people that haven't been in the tournament scene for a long time or haven't been quote unquote like known like you know Suleiman. Uh, those of us who know, are in small gang or watch a lot of PvP videos, you know, Suleiman is uh, known. Uh, very so far and wide. So yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's really cool to see people like Footwork coming out. You know, just like a small group of guys from C5 Wormhole. I think that's awesome. Yeah, you know, you would just like start to start somewhere. Time to, <laughs> I would just like to take this time to plug our event that we're doing in September, Bay. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Aha, uh -huh, yes. Um, okay, so it's Eve underscore NT event. Um, it's in Nottingham on September the 29th. Um, and uh, we've done two of these so far, um, myself and a colleague of mine, uh, Nash Kadava, um, and it's basically an EVE meetup uh, at a great venue, it's got about past 250 people, that's how many tickets we're aiming to sell, um, I think it's selling them really fast, uh, last time I checked with uh, Nash, so if you do want to look it up, it's on the forums, um, you can go to, I oh, forget the name of the website, you can find meetups, <laughs> everyone know it off the top of the head? Um, evenmeet.com that's the one thank you very much um, stick that into google and you should be able to find it okay yeah absolutely um so yeah um last time i ran a tournament that was quite successful it was a 64 player uh 2v2 single elimination um basically the way it worked is people threw their names in the hat as they came through the door luckily we got almost exactly the right number of people to run the tournament and it was a 31 matches throughout the day so it's pretty hectic bob kindly helped me uh, commentate most of those matches and he was pretty exhausted by the end um, but it went pretty smoothly so it was like one cruiser one frigate you jump in to the seat uh, you and your buddy who you've been picked to play with decide which ship you want and bob prefit all the ships so it's just it's about ship selection really um, and then tactics on grid so you don't have to think about it too much before the match um, you just have to have a good strategy when you actually sit down um, and we gave away absolutely tons of prizes and we hope to do the same again in September so look into that if you're interested in taking part in a live EVE sort of tournament PvP Yeah and walk away with lots and lots of swag We EVE first place and got something like £500 worth of EVE swag Yeah, yeah They had um, CCP stuff, they had cooler master keyboards and mice and it was just awesome It was really great If you, if you live in the UK I definitely recommend you look into coming down, it's a lot of fun. Um, I think Nash told me an interesting statistic today, something like 90% of people who came to the first event came back for the second, so we're doing something right, I think. <laughs> okay. I wish I wish I could fly across the pond to come join you guys, it does sound pretty cool. Yeah, yeah sure Americans well. seem to get me screwed a little bit by like Eve Meets, sadly. Hey, they got, they, they got uh, Vegas. The England thing looks interesting. Yeah, yeah I got Vegas. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Getting in Nottingham is a pain in the ass, though. Hey, it's in the middle, middle of the country. Uh, yeah, I yeah. guess. I would have to fly to, like, London and take a train or something. Yeah, I mean... Something crazy like that. <laughs> Getting a train. Gorski, what you really need to do is just uh, get your private Learjet and, uh, you know, take that to the airport, and then you get in your helicopter, and then it drops you off on the front lawn. <laughs> but, yeah, that would be cool. Drop I'm, just, I'm just imagining Gorski with like low fit glasses at the moment. Internet spaceship badly. Just that would be funny. There's models. It's a good thing we don't show webcam because I'm not wearing many much clothes. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's yeah. true actually. I'm not, I'm not wearing any pants either. All this all this talk about uh two v two tournaments, tournaments in general and kinda you know, footwork getting their started getting their started just out of a C5 wormhole. If any of you guys watching the stream right now are interested in flying with guys who do a lot of small gang or do uh, tournaments. Uh, me and some term left guys, uh, Sturm in particular, have started our own channel called Microgang Space Help, Microgang Help on TQ. 
So if you guys want to join our chat channel, you can definitely check it out. We take random roams from there. So if you want to fly small micro gang stuff with us or just, you know, hang out, uh, definitely a place to check out if you're interested. Alrighty then. Borski, what have you been up to recently? I heard you've been doing something that involves a lot of mathematics. Uh, yeah, I wrote an... Like, I did first, I did a Crossing Cybers article on battle cruisers, And, like, recently I finished one on the missile application for medium missiles. I think they're gonna publish sometime soon, I'm not really sure. And I finished, like, an article on the, an archetype for small gang PvP today as well. Yeah, that was a really, really good read, and I also enjoyed the stuff that you had written up for Worlds Collide, like, really, really in-depth. I don't find myself reading a lot of blogs, but your stuff, like, has the technical yeah, side, yeah. like, really down to it, and that's what I find interesting, so I highly recommend it. They're good stuff. Yeah, I started writing my blog, and then got, like, hired slash stolen by Crossing Zebras, and I write for them instead. Making, making dank internet Yeah, they, they pay more, they pay more than my blog. Good so they pay more than nothing. Yeah, stealing that Eve bet money like you should, sir. Yeah, you know it. You know it. Gorski car for CSN. Yeah, yeah, I'm working on it. Working. I just want to quick point out that they did bring the confessor setup, yay. Yes. It's confessor absolutions. Oh yeah, yeah it does look as if we're just about ready for the next match. And the Caracal, uh, Celestis Rook, is back. Or I shouldn't say back, but they've chosen that, which I think is a really, really good, good pick from uh, Footwork. Yeah, so um, we've lost a posse somewhere. Uh, Bob and Chasse, do you want to compensate this one? Unless, uh, Gorski, you want to step up and have a go? Yeah, I can. I'll let those guys comment. I can like, add some comments on my own. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So you, right. you want it, and I'll stick to try and concentrate on making the camera uh, as less spinny and confusing as possible. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, that's, I... that's a heavy beam. Uh... Episode, by the way. Yes, yes. Uh, I just introduced the um, Tusker side. We have a Confessor warped in at 30, along with the Confessor Beam Absolution. And way in at 50, you have the Oneiros and also the Mollus. So, really nice setup, uh, ready to go from Tuskers. Bob, what do they have on Footwork side? Footwork has an ECM comp. They have a Rook Celestis, Alcaracol, and Basilisk. So it's a damn heavy, ECM heavy control comp with Caracals for damage and a Basilisk for reps. It'll be interesting to see if the ECM can have much of an effect on the Confessor, because the Confessor is reasonably strong against ECM in my opinion. I agree, as well as the Absolution could be uh, uh, providing some really, really nice uh, signal strength to kind of need to power through. And let's not forget the malls, of course, that they also have hopefully helping out with dealing with the jams. You know, it's going to be interesting to me, uh, these Confessor pilots are really going to be on the ball here because these Caracals with RLMLs, if they're not in the right mode or if they're not far or if they're too far away from the Oneros, they're going to get you know, almost insta popped and volleyed. Depending on what their fits are, it's going to be interesting to see if they're 10MN or 10 m or uh, one MN and MWD. So the forward team isn't at max range, whereas the Tuskers team is at 30 and at 50. Chester, do you think these uh, Caracals are going to be able to break the Samiros? You know, it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to be able to use their RLML fire. If the Tuskers team has their wits about them, and they notice that the Caracals are wasting volleys on, on the Oneiros, um, they can probably just burn in the Confessors right away, get hard tackle, and start going to work on the Lodgy and ECM. Uh, match just started now, and it looks like Confessors burning off to the side, Absolution burning in, really, really nice play. The Footwork team is just burning away right backwards, beams coming out already. It's going to be interesting to see what they're going to do making the first turn coming up to the edge of the arena. I'm seeing a lot of Aurora from these Confessors. Still no damage yet on the Tuskers team. Both teams are kind of casually kind of flying away from each other. Tuskers are a lot more spread out, whereas uh, Footwork is kind of balling up and just moving away. Bit of damage on the Caracal. Surely nothing that the Basilisk can't handle on the, the Footwork side. It's no damage at all applied to the Tuskers team at the moment. Yeah, you know, it's going to be advantageous for the Footwork team to burn away like this. Their missiles are going to get extended range um, with the... Uh... Tusker's team burning in. This Basilisk needs to start being careful, though, of the boundary. Yeah, that, that Basilisk is very, very close to the boundary edge. He has 108 kilometers, so he's got 12 kilometers to go. Footwork are brush against the edge of the arena here. Still not much damage being applied here, though. This is really dangerous, though, because the Footwork team, as far as what I can see right now, they've actually stopped moving, and they're not moving anywhere. And this Absolution is just creeping closer and closer and closer, and it's going to force them up to the edge of the arena. This Celestis is at 23, 24. 
oh god it barely barely scraped away there but i'm worried because the footwork team doesn't seem to be moving left right or upper center they're just backing themselves up against yeah. what do you think is going to happen here well that Celestis is taking damage on the footwork side now huge chunk of shield damage it's important to note that Celestis is shield tanked so that huge chunk of shield damage is a huge deal these yeah, confessors do still seem to be cutting off a little bit. Huge chunk of damage on the uh, Kate Katia and the confessor there. He has armor tank though, so it's not significant damage yet. Yeah, both confessors taking damage here. Looks like the caracals are yeah. splitting the fire. Just, yeah, just a releasing problem. drones. Yeah, they are. Uh, confessors underneath the uh, reps are going to be able to in defensive mode easily tank the two two caracals, no problem. Uh, it's important to right, boundaries. Though. Guys, the, yeah, I'm going to have to call the match. Unfortunately, um, I did give the both team captains uh, like strict instructions that when the Celeste, I lost lock on a player, then they boundaried, then their team would instantly lose the match because unfortunately, unlike unlike uh, in the night's tournament, uh, the tournament tools give. Um, uh, the people running the tournament cease to be running the tournament they instantly vaporize the ship as soon as it crosses the boundary unfortunately in this um, it means that that ship outside the boundary he's broken the rules yet he is still contributing to the fight he's still damping the hostile players he's still affecting the fight so it's just not fair um, unfortunately he's carry on the match once he's broken the rules of crossing that boundary so I'm going to have to call this match unfortunately um, it's pretty hard plus, lesson plus to learn does. Um, it looks like they're still fighting. We'll take but... the tournament, but we will. I think we will just play this out to the end. Just yeah, to, to see yeah. how it would have panned out. But yeah, yeah Tuskers has won this uh, mini yeah. lights tournament. Yeah, you know that being said, whether them winning or not, I, you know, with the Celestis boundary or not, I really am disappointed that Footwork basically got up to the edge of the arena and just sat there and let the Absolution basically just close range with impunity, um, pushing them up against the side where piloting errors like this could be more common. Um, I think that more practice or maybe more f familiarity with working inside the arena knowing when the entire team needs to start turning or moving around really would help out oh there. that's so disappointing and that confessor's dead on tusker's side footwork hand boundary violated they would have won this match so bad this is unfortunate it looks like the confessor just wasn't close enough to get reps maybe wasn't in a defensive mode uh and that'll kill you very, very quickly. I, I think that Nero's is most likely jammed by the Aruk, or alternatively, no, he was, he was based. The Confessor was basically on top of the the logistic ship, so it looks like he was jammed for that effect. It looks like the second Confessor. That's ah, such a disappointment for Fruitwork. They hadn't boundary violated oh, no, this match. Both Confessors down. All the damage for the Tusker is gone now. Now. Yeah, that is a shame. Oh, man. Um, I'm going to have to stick with the rules, though, just because those are the rules I laid out, and I guess it would be unfair to the Tuskers to um, give Footwork the victory. It looks like they're going to get They would have had otherwise. I'm actually really, really surprised uh, that the Confessors went down so quickly like that. I would have assumed that the Absolution getting in and getting a tackle on a ship um, with the Confessors just sitting at range with beams uh, would have been sufficient enough to either outrun Caracals, which are about 65k in their range, um, and just sit back with Lodgy. It's really interesting that both of them dropped. Yeah. Well, you do have to remember that you know, a tech-free destroyer is a tech-free destroyer. It's, it's a destroyer still, basically. They're not really well known for their buffer, and the only way the, those confessors can stay up is if a logistics is wrecking them. If that logistics ship is jammed, those confessors will not live for very long, even if they're in defensive mode. The only other option if the logistics is jammed is for the confessor to burn out and hopefully try and, try and outrun those missiles. I'm going to ask them uh, to post the confessor fit, but to me it looks like they're MWD fit uh, with beams. Um, I don't yeah, think they're I, I, I definitely saw some radio or aurora on those confessors. I assume they will be fit. It'll be interesting to see if they are dual light or if they are. Yeah, they are MWD lasers. fit. That's almost exactly what was fit earlier with the uh, camel team. But yeah, um, definitely MWD fit confessors can get hit really, really hard from parallel missiles. If not, <laughs> yeah, if you're not, yeah, like the best, the best way to survive them, at least from I think. Uh, what I found was you can see yourself getting red box, turn and burn in speed mode, and then turn your MWD off and coast, switch to defense, so you're coasting at like 2k a second, you switch to defense mode with no sig now, and a better armor rep, or excuse me, better armor resist profile, and you can actually coast like another 20 or 30 kilometers underneath fire, and it really helps reduce damage, but if you screw that up, poof. Yeah, it does look as if though those caracals are now really struggling to go anything on the Tusker's team now that the Confessor's gone, no. I think if uh, 
barring the boundary violation, this probably would have went to time otherwise. Just can't see those rapid light muscle launch of caracals even breaking the neuros or breaking the absolution. No, definitely not. That's why it would have been interesting just to see the absolution pushed with their team pushed up against the edge of the arena like that. Once it gets scram web on something and you just sit on top of it with gleam, um, you know, that's 800 DPS at least. Uh, and Confessor sitting in the background with just beam, you know, Aurora loaded. Uh, I think it would have been an interesting match to see. Like that, the, the Celestis did get on top of the uh, the Absolution, and yeah, it did go down in the end. Yeah, no problem. Absolution is comfortably, comfortably sitting in high armor, and I don't think it's going to have anything to worry about like you were saying earlier. It just goes down to, can the Absolution catch Caracals and everything else? How are we doing for time, Bay? I'm posting um, Frank's zero message in local, so you can see they've got just a little under three minutes left. Yeah, three minutes left. I don't think anything else, maybe barring the Mollus, is going to die. I think uh, Footwork would have taken this, and unfortunately for that, that pilot and Redder. It's the same in any It's interesting really. about the Absolution, I think, has caught the Basilisk. Um, and if the Absolution gets on top of the Basilisk, I don't see it living for very long, provided it can actually apply its damage. Oh, yeah, it does look like that Basilisk has been caught here. It's, uh, yeah, up it's against kind, the edge of the arena. Yeah. You know, it's interesting to note, just looking at the Absolution intermittently, it seems that both Caracals together are, with full loads of RLML, doing about 10-15% to 15 armor on it, assuming it's not being repped. So it would take uh, over 6 reloads, 5 reloads for them to kill the Absolution without reps getting on it. Yeah, it's a bit questionable, the, uh, them shooting the Absolution, I think that Amuros probably would have been a better target. So maybe switch damage types and try and burn down that Amuros. Most definitely. But again, I don't think anything else is going to die here. I think that Basilisk has broken free, and yeah, not much damage being applied now. Can, I'm just trying to add a no, point now, to my head. Now it, there's a Rook nearby. It is, uh, it's close, is it? The Basilisk, Nearest, so the Basilisk, the Basilisk is taking burned damage away. Now. Yeah, the Basilisk yeah, has burned off. Yeah, the Neuros is it's, it's taking huge chunks of damage. The amount of ECM that the Absolution must be under uh, is probably making it very difficult to hold on to targets once it catches them. Thanks to both Confessors going down. And now with the Oniero suffering, uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to be able to tank. It doesn't have anything hard tackled on it, so it's really up to the Absolution to see if it can kill, hopefully, that Rook before the two Caracals start coming back on it after they're done working on the Oniero's. Yeah, and the Oniero's is tanking comfortably at the moment. Most of the Fruitwork team is just kiting at range. So the Basilisk again is trying to run away from the Absolution, and the Absolution is a little bit slower, and I don't think he's going to be able to catch him, but oh, came very, very close once again. So just under a minute left, guys. 40 seconds left, sorry, my pardon. It does look as if the Mollus might die at the end of this match, but it doesn't look like any other ships are going to die. No, barring a, a huge mistake, um, but I don't even think they're going to bind her anymore because they're all within 90, so... It should be good. You know, it's really unfortunate that uh, that Celeste's pilot had made that little error, but this would have been a really nice match otherwise, I think. And it would have, of course, brought more games, which is always great. What, what we need to do, guys, is we need, is we need to push CCP and, and get CCP to give certain people on CC the tools to use the Alliance tournament tools, which would be amazing, because then we could run something oh, yeah. like this. I, mean, I can't see another way of doing it, unfortunately. Ask that on Vanfest. Yeah. It's... Yeah, yeah. Like, they want to do it. No, I agree with your rules. While they are harsh, um, there's it's really the only fair way to do it, and I agree with that. It's just unfortunate when you're having really, really good games like this um, coming back and forth. Where you, yeah, anyway, it's just unfortunate. But either way, really well played by both teams, um, and I think that's the match. Yeah, it would have been a footwork victory if not for that boundary violation. Such a shame. All right, I've enjoyed. Back, I've enjoyed. Uh, talk about something else. Yeah, I've enjoyed running this. It is. Um, I do have to hand victory to the Tuskers, so they have. Uh, they've won with pretty straightforward three-one, two dominating matches. One they lost, and one they would have lost, but they didn't. <laughs> yeah, such a shame. We could have had a, a five, like a five-match series out of this. It could have been pretty awesome. But. You know, if you boundary violate in a real tournament setting as well, then you know it's going to cost you. Yeah, um, most definitely. It, uh, what were you going to say? I see Sully is offering to to play out the last match to see how uh, 
to see if it were going to pull their match back, uh, just for honour's sake, uh, even though officially they have won the series. I'm just waiting to see whether or not Footwork are up for that. <laughs> you know, I am 100% up for sticking around to get getting to see another match. Um, yeah. So at least you have my vote. <laughs> well, if, if Footwork and I'm to do it, maybe we can get the two team captains here and discuss what went on during the tournament. Oh, that would be really nice too. Yeah, I'm really sorry, guys, but they okay, have to get but, up in but, so. yeah, the team captains have agreed to do that, so they're going to set. We're going to set one more last match. Um, so, Bob, I'm curious. I don't. We haven't really covered much about the world's colliding. I'd love to know a kind of like behind the scenes sort of perspective. If that's something you wanted to chat about, if viewers might be interested in that. Well, I've actually got an article up at the moment that was published a few days ago about the, the whole World's Collide experience and uh, what was like to be up there. And just to know how the matches went and all the analysis and stuff between the comps. But yeah, World's Collide was awesome for me. Uh, I went to VanFest, Gargan asked me to, uh, if I would cast as part of the World's Collide thing because he was at uh, the last Nottingham event. So yeah, he roped me into it and it was just this whole crazy production. When I went into the Harpa uh, backstage and saw the, the lift, like the elevator thing with the smoke, I was just like, oh, oh shit. What have I done? What have I got myself in for for this thing? But it was really rewarding and it was really cool. And it was great to work with Fozzie and Gargan and Squeebles and Laz. And it was just an awesome experience. And I hope I'll possibly repeat it. I'm going to go for AT Commentator this year as well. Cool. Good luck with that. We need. Uh... Always User a nice, thick, deep group of commentators. Yeah, aren't you going to go for AT commentator this year as well, Chester? Ha! <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I might be flying in AT, so who knows. <laughs> yeah, that's always but... the thing, isn't it? Would you rather fly or would you rather go to Iceland? I've, I've got to be... I'm ashamed oh, to say, yeah, Chester, yeah, yeah. I'm not... You fly for camel, right? Or you... I'm, me, I'm feeling me? bad. Yeah. I uh, fly for Mining Industry Exile. Oh, is that uh, where uh, Warlords of the Deep? Yes, Warlords of the Deep. Ah, okay, cool. cool. It's, his, it's Camel Train Corp, that's what he flies in. Right, okay. I wasn't entirely sure the relationship to you guys, uh, but yeah, I just, yeah. Cool. It's 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 friendly. <laughs> nice, nice. Yes, you get, you get lots of newbies in there like Chester. Oh, we'll, uh, we get taught the ropes of the game. And my yeah. X-ray facts are foundation. Put in an application, Fab Scale be happy to accept you, like right on the spot if you apply. <laughs> <laughs> I might do that in an alt, you know, just for fun. But I, I, I was, I was actually tempted Don't to work. come to Thera for that micro gang thing channel because that sounds really fun. I mean, even though I do that shit anyway, it wouldn't be like new to me. But I, I'd love to fly with you guys. Is that like open to anyone, or are you just encouraging noobs to take part? No, absolutely Everyone. open to anyone. We take everybody with us. Um, we've had some really, really good fights so far. Uh, I took my Bogorn out once, and we had, you know, a guy coming to carries in an Orthrus, and we had like, uh, you know, a, a, a cruise typhoon and a Vexor Navy issue, and we went out and just dunked like a thirty-man T1 cruiser fleet. It was a lot of fun. So sometimes roams go good, but other times, like last night, we decided to go out in a battleship roam, and things don't go so well. Uh, <laughs> but overall, we just try and teach people who might be tired of you know uh, f1 just click f1 sort people by name in the overview and just kind of bring them into uh, kind of a deeper pvp experience which i think is a lot of fun which is why i kind of want to share it with people just because i've been playing eve religiously for many many years and what keeps me kicking with this game is just because of how complex and how deep this game is and how hard it is to play at a really high level it's a sandbox it. nature of Eve, though, isn't it? Sometimes you have fantastic roams, you've got to kill tons of stuff, and you have like really adrenaline pumping fights, you know, against a huge blob or get really PDP against the shakes, odds. Baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, Chester, have you ever been in a tournament match before? Yes, I've been in many tournament matches, and the reason why I really like flying AT is because it brings back the shakes that you get almost as bad as, you know, when you were a super newbie, and it was like your maybe first dozen or so kills you get or your first solo kill i love that stuff every tournament match just now especially when i was flying with the uh, rook cartel rook cartel in the last lines tournament and the uh, rep cartel in the last neo tournament i still get the shakes every time even though i've post probably done hundreds of tournament matches at this point i get the shakes every time and there's always a nervous pooing oh yeah you know being in harpa you know, watching the stage and everything like that, I was getting, 
you know, it's just that like the adrenaline shakes as usual. Just it's so it's so intense. Like there's so much hype. It's awesome. That was another thing that was really crazy about Worlds Collide as well. It was the huge live audience. It was like I I love it. I thought that was great. It was awesome. Shanty, you know, USA. I've 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 been to you know League of Legends Worlds, uh, and I've been in the stadiums. I've got you know I've been there, and that type of hype is something that I wish Eve would have too. And you know, being in Harpo with all those people, that you got like a little taste of it. I thought it was great. Yeah, being at Eve NC and being at Harpo during Worlds Collide, like you can really feel the people into the tournament. And honestly, for you, you guys, you know, listening to the stream, I can't really overestimate how awesome it is at a live Eve tournament. It doesn't sound like it'll be the best thing in the world, but it's really a lot of fun getting into the matches and just hearing the crowd and just feeding off the the crowd. It's just it's great. The um, I remember the yeah, cheer, the cheering it's... for the final of the EVNT tournament. Uh, about I think it was about ten p.m. roughly, maybe nine p.m. It was a little bit earlier, and so everyone in the room had been drinking like a hundred guys for about nine hours, and so yeah, you can kind of imagine the rest. Like when it was pretty tense final, and um, yeah, it was great. There was a lot of cheering and um, a lot of. Uh, a lot of drunken support for the bastards they brought like 20 guys as well so they were just dominating cheering so we need more people to like bring groups this time so they can cheer their guys on and dominate the uh, the crowd as well so it could be really fun oh, I know I, I think that in upcoming years I really hope that EVE sports can become a thing hopefully I would absolutely love that I think it's hard for CCP it's know, like, I think the it is a minority interest at this point, unfortunately. I mean, like, I'm trying to promote it, it like, do doing stuff like this. I enjoy it. I love watching it, so, uh, and no one out there is making it between Alliance Tournament and Alliance Tournament, so I'm like, well, shit, I'll just try and make it, you know? I think more people just got to step up and, and do it and stream it, because, like, loads of people are streaming at the moment. I think streaming, like, small gang rooms and stuff is cool, um, but there's a lot of gaps in between finding a fight yeah, when nothing really happens and it can be really dull as a streaming experience for a viewer it's kind of interesting yeah, when they, yeah. like I love watching clips of like um, I'm trying to think of some great streamers off the top of my head and I can't uh, but I love li watching clips of their stuff it's exciting stuff does happen because they get stream sniped and uh, you know people go out and hunt them because they're streaming and that's cool that's, that's exciting but there's a lot of downtime and I just wish those streamers would like kind of maybe get together and make some sort of more organised it doesn't necessarily have to be a 5v5 tournament they could just do like a big like 100 man free for alls I could it can be a good, exciting experience to, as a viewer. I think Eve, uh, because it because it's a complex game. You know, um, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of choices and decisions to be made by the competitors. Yeah, you know, everything that you describe, you know, the hype and everything else. Uh, going back to the "This Is Eve" trailer, it's interesting that I show that to people who have never played Eve before, and they absolutely love it. They think it's great, but what people don't understand is that's like the culmination of so much pain like you know, people that make videos like big micer or um you know uh prometheus people like that you see the fights but you don't see the logistics the hour roams where you get nothing but maybe like a gank which doesn't really satisfy us because we're looking for fights and that's painful to me and i am also a really really big proponent of making a type of eve whether it's a standalone or like a dojo or i don't care what you do to where I can log in for 40 minutes, I can get fights, and then I can log out. I would love that. Okay, so let's segue this and talk about structured PvP. Structured PvP in EVE would really consist of what Chesser has just discussed. You know, being able to jump into EVE, get a fight, and then log out. The same way you'd have like a match of Counter-Strike, or a match of LoL, for example. Gorski, what do you think about structured PvP? Uh, like, I think, I would kind of like it, I think, but... I know a lot of people who wouldn't like it just scream it's, scream it's not like in the sandbox or some shit like that, but honestly like it wouldn't interfere with normal EVE, just have a, some matchmaking system like on CC or something. Yeah, I, I would love that too. You know, people make this nice grandiose claim about the sandbox of EVE and the meta and the politics, and to be honest with you, I don't give a rat's ass about any of that. For example, the brave politic shitload storm that happened on Reddit. It's about two neckbeards who act like childs, excuse me, who act like children, and it spills over into Reddit. And I'm not interested <laughs> by it, and I think a lot of other people aren't interested by I it. I deleted over 20 threads. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, don't, and I don't think people are interested in that. I know there's a large group of people who are not interested in that. And I'm talking about structured PvP or EVE sports in general. 
I don't want it to interfere with tranquility. I don't care if it does or does not. You know, if you give us cool ship skins, because, hey, Chesser, you were ranked number 10 this this month in Structured PvP League or whatever, here's your nice, cool, like, uh, like gold skin. That's cool, but, you know, as far, I would be happily content just, you know, being able to just practice fights, you know? I think that'd be awesome. All Richie, then. So are we going to have a fifth match, B? Yeah, I believe as I speak, the teams are undocking and they're going to be on grid as quickly as possible. Um, so yeah, just to recap, if you joined us late, um, we've played out uh, four matches so far. And Tuskers have won on a 3-1 victory, but the last match they won by default um, as Footwork boundaried. Um, and uh, we're just going to play out the last match that might have happened had that boundary not happened. Because it looked like Footwork were going to take a, a solid victory in that match. Um, so this is just a bit for fun, a bit for honour. Uh, I'm just locking the ships as we go now. So... Um, should we stick with how we were going? You guys are doing a great job commentating um, while I fiddle around with the camera and check timings and things on local, which I maybe should have assigned to someone else to do uh, instead of trying to commentate at the same time. <laughs> yeah, you do too much, B. Yeah, we're happy to do it again. That's not a problem. It's not I do a have problem. note, guys. Both did have to bail, unfortunately, since it's not feeling incredibly well at the moment. So we did lose Ooh, him at some hope point. He, hope he starts, hope he starts feeling better. Yeah, man. That's you, so you're supposed to come in your micro gang room, right? Exactly. I'm gonna have to hold it to him. <laughs> oh, Although... very interesting comp on the field here from Tuskers. Kind of excited. Yes, yes, yes. It looks to me like that is a. Oh, dare I say work it. has brought something peculiarly cool. That's, that's <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. Hell yes. This is gonna be oh, an this interesting. Is gonna be awesome. Yeah, so, Tusker's, Tusk Tusker's coming in really well. Sorry, Bob, go ahead. No, go ahead, Jesser. Just about Tusker's, I'll tell about Fruit Works. I'm really excited. Alright, we'll do. So, Tusker's have brought in the quote unquote armor fly catcher uh, fit, a fly killer flit, excuse me. And we have two heretics. We have an x a rail phobos, and an Eos, which also is rocking rails. So, kite setup. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to match up well against what Footwork is going to be bringing, which Bob will introduce them as soon as they land on the grid. Yes, I have them on scan at the moment. They haven't actually arrived on grid yet, but it's going to be pretty interesting. It's a setup we were hoping to see during Worlds Collide, but unfortunately the camel didn't decide to bring it. But you know, now that I look what... closer at the EOS, there are no guns fitted. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, how do you feel the, the EOS versus the Astarte fits in that comp, Jesser? Well, EOS I don't like as much just because uh, drone boats in general, I believe, are slower. And considering this is World's Collide rule, it only can use T1 drones, uh, which is going to hit it really, really hard. Um, compared to the Astarte, I think Astarte is a little bit better. Yeah, I think the Astarte is a little bit better as well, especially with the, the Tech 1 drone drill. Tech 1 drones, they have less hit points, they do less damage, and I believe are slightly slower than Tech 2 drones. So it is a bit of a handicap. Plus, the Aos has that really lovely hybrid turret tracking speed bonus, which, with rails and the right ammo type, I think okay, is something that I, you know, is, is really, really nice. I wouldn't want to waste it. But, you know, lots of links, maybe, lots of newts, smart bombs, who knows? Could be interesting. Yeah, to see. you do see unfitted that you so rarely. I do think it is better to start fitting links and other stuff for utility highs, like drone link augmenters and newts, etc., just to make it a little bit more survivable. Definitely, definitely. Come on, footwork! Come on the field! I this, see what you have. It's uh, awesome. This is work in progress. This, uh, this, this <laughs> setting up this, uh, this event. Uh, what I did because I'm lazy is just uh, give footwork a bookmark. Uh, it, you play seems a bookmark, which is the sense beacon bookmark, and uh, Tusker's undocked from the station and warped to the range of that bookmark. Footwork have to go to the sun and then walk back. So they have to get to the sun and they then they have to walk back. So it's taking them a little bit longer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This just goes back to, to yeah. if more of if more members of the community can complain to CCP where we can get proper tools to set up arenas, to set up, you know, like insta death kill ray and stuff like that, I think that'd be really nice. Yeah, I can't overestimate the how slap dash this tournament is Hey, the press gang, I'm trying. Gorski and Abolf <laughs> into doing this yesterday and basically didn't tell Bay they were coming and we just kinda all showed up. And I don't mind though. I love, like I said, oh, this here is we awesome go. to me. Uh oh, so we have it's a the sentinel. sentinel. Yeah, we have a sentinel on the field for Fruitwork guys. So they are bringing the sentinel comp. It's going to be so, so interesting. 
we were talking Sentinel about this a little bit before in between the breaks. The Sentinel is in, in 20, though? That's a bit crazy. Hmm. Yeah, that's very interesting. Can you give it's us a rundown close. on what they brought? Yeah, so we have a Sentinel, Absolution, Chikur. And we have a Blackbird and a Guardian. Hold on one second, just locking up teams. It's going to be really, really interesting to see the footwork team pull out um, the finesse that I think is needed for the Sentinel Blackbird team. Yeah, I mean, I was I was so hope that Camel brought this because I really wanted to see them in action. Uh, looks like we might have just yeah. It looks like one of the Tuskers has just disconnected, so we'll give him a second to relog. I it's, think it's it a, maybe a four work edit. Oh no, it's not. It's it's a Tuskers, edit. Yeah, I think yeah. they're uh, they're logic pilot um, disconnected. So yeah, so interesting warp ins from the four work team here. Uh, the Ishkur and the Sentinel have warped in at twenty, whereas uh, alongside the Absolution and the Blackbird and the Guardian is in at fifty. So, those frigates perhaps too close, Chesser? Oh, I definitely agree. You know, the frigates have the mobility on everything that the armor fly killer, fly killer has, and they need to be very, very careful of those heretics. Um, well, the reason that a sentinel would be that close, I have no idea. You know, it's either going to be TDing or it needs to sit back and wait for an apple opportunity to get in on um, the x and just need to drive. But in the beginning stages of the matches with heretics sitting 20k off the x that's not going to happen. So I'm really concerned as... Uh, you sound like you are as well. Yeah, I think it's honestly going to be a hard counter here. I think the Tuskers basically has this match. Uh, those heretics, I can't imagine they would... Uh, those heretics are basically going to volley that sentinel off the field and actually followed by the Ishkur. Just to let you know, Bob, you basically, yeah, anything floated else? away from the beacon a little bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, my, my knock is out of position. Yeah, those heretics are essentially going to take apart the support for the... Uh, on the footwork team here. I do believe the full boss and the EOS will have more than enough damage to take out that part and the absolution. So I don't think things look particularly good for footwork, sadly. But I am still excited to see that set Perhaps I can pull out some magic and uh, maybe pull out a win here. Yeah, the only the only thing that I can see maybe coming out strong for the footwork team right off the bat is if somehow um, Heretics fly poorly, and Absolution gets there while Blackbird's jamming them. Um, you know, Sentinel with Newts can turn off their MWDs very quickly, and if the Absolution can get there, get a kill quickly. But otherwise, bar and that that would be pretty ridiculous. But barring that from happening, I definitely agree with the uh, you know Tuskers taking this pretty handedly. Do you feel that Beam Absolution can possibly volley through those Heretic and maybe perhaps take them out? I don't believe so, just because the Absolution is going to be sitting most likely in Aurora, and um, Aurora has really, really bad tracking, and I assume the EOS is running a lot of links. Um, with the already sick reduction that the Heretics have, I think it's going to be really, really difficult. Um, throw in the last caveat there that the Absolution has no tracking bonus, and I think it'll be a difficult uh, shot. I'm really interested to see if these Heretics are going to be able to volley through the Sentinel. I believe the Sentinel does have a decent explosive resist, but the Heretics can fire pretty much any type they want, and with the light vessels, they do do a lot of volley damage. They're basically yeah, going to match that just guardian. starting now. Yep, here we go. It's going to be interesting to see Sentinels, sen yeah, Sentinels already Sentinels. getting hit hard. Yeah, Sentinels already getting them headshotted by those Heretics. Full boss on the Tusker side taking a lot of damage. Sentinel in half armor. Rep slowly but being applied, but it does look the Sentinel. That Ooh, one Heretic of Jaxley is chasing him down, though. Chasing him down. I think he can probably tank under one heretic. That, that other heretic is completely separated uh, as well, flying up above. So they're actually not going to be able to focus down the Sentinel, and that's going to maybe be a problem. Eos is creeping closer and closer to the Ishkur, which isn't really moving that much, uh, which is interesting to me, because I think it should probably stay near the Absolution, possibly. Absolution's getting dangerously close to the x though. Yeah, that Sentinel is staying alive, surprisingly. It doesn't look like these Heretics and Volley through and the Guardian is keeping reps in them. Absolution taking shield damage now. Still not a hell of a lot of damage applied to the Tuskers team. Full boss no. really creeping for armor, but that's looking like the Excure is probably going to keep up with it. Yeah, you know, it's interesting to me, the Latronicus and the Heretic completely not following uh, the other Heretic of uh, Jaxley, and I think not having his DPS allowed the Sentinel to crawl back from half armor. I think if both Heretics were able to apply damage to that Sentinel, it would be dead. Yeah, the, the Guardian on the Footwork is doing a fantastic job of keeping these frigates alive at the moment. But sadly, Footwork just doesn't seem to apply any damage to the Tuskers whatsoever. x is easily taking what damage leaks through uh, all of the control. That Sentinel is 
flying off on its own at the moment. Can you see his positioning, Chess? Uh, Sentinel, yeah, it's kind of creeping up to the side, still near uh, the Guardian, which is kind of burning in towards it. Uh, we just had a Thanny on the grid. Interesting. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it looks like the last match has been interfered with, guys. Someone's going to about to get reported for interrupting uh, non consensual PvP. <laughs> yep. This guy Enjoy here. Bands. This guy here. Make sure you report him, guys. I don't know who he is, but. It's pissing me off right now. What is he? Oh god, fucking Skynet. Yeah. And Haji. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, this this just goes again to show that a separate tool um, to allow certain players or people that have talked to CCP or signed NDAs or whatever or what have you um, to allow to put on fun tournaments like this really needs to be needed just because. Um, you know, stuff like this isn't funny, and I don't understand, you know, why people feel the need to do things like this. Yeah, I actually saw that the Stratios drop a sign, though, like two, two or three minutes ago or something. They are taking out the referee ship. It's, yeah, fun times. In the meantime, though, Footwork has lost a Blackbird. It does look like the finesse was perhaps a bit too much for Footwork in this one, and does look, oh, wow, what the hell was it? Oh, yeah, Fanny Fighters are on stuff at the moment. Yep, so it does look as if this last match, last match is going to be basically spoiled, so... Yep. yep, please CCP, give us our own tournament server, please give us our tournament tools to really stop this kind of shit happening. And yeah, shitty way to end what's been a pretty cool tournament. Yeah, well thanks for coming guys, I really appreciate your help commentating. I think uh, you're right, I did try and do too much. <laughs> so next time I might organise further people no, to no, commentate honestly, while I arrange. No, let so. this uh, dampen your spirits, pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a bit of a shameless. Oh well, it was good fun, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it, it technically wrapped up. Then, if that was like a, if that was the end of, uh, uh, you know, a, if it would be, it'd gone to two to two, and then some guy screwed up the last match, that would have been highly disappointing. Um, but you know, at least this was just an exhibition match at the side there, um, at the end for these guys to uh, try and gain some honour. Uh, hopefully, they're both ganging up on them now. I, don't, I can't lock them because they. The first thing the Thanos did as he came through was kill me. So, <laughs> in the park. <laughs> yeah, on the flip side, I, I feel considering the two comps stack side by side, the Tuskers probably would have had this. I mean, the Blackbird, I think, did down before the Thanos came in the field and started killing shit. But, yeah. Never, we'll never know. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. I'm honestly just. Like, pretty disgusted. Yeah. The, the people who are doing this are, are clearly scumbags, and they're clearly going to get a shout at that when I get back to my regular comms. But it was actually shaping up to be a really nice match, too, um, which is unfortunate. We've had two matches, one from rule violations, which needed to be done, and now, and now from this, uh, you know, just wasting a lot of people's time. Um, I think Sully well, and Frank, the captains, are going to pop on to comms and have a quick chat if you wanted to ask them any questions about yeah. the matches. Um, yeah. yeah, no, that would be good. I've got some questions about that Drake setup. <laughs> that was all my fault. <laughs> she, should be, she should be asking those questions to Bane. Yeah. I, I tried to bait them into banning that instead, like of, like a instead of World Collide setup. But, uh, they didn't fall for it. All right, guys, I think we're just going to call this match at the moment. I'm going to warp off like a coward and save my Noctis. And I think we shall just take a little bit of a break and get the team captains on here and just chat with them a little bit. Sure. So, let's talk about something else. What can we talk about? Anything you guys well, want to bring up? So many, so many great things to talk about, really. Uh... Obviously, complaining about CCP and tournament tools, you can only do for so long. Um, I think the next channel. interesting bit that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about yet would just be the thoughts of the heavy missile rebalance or considerations or talk about it. Um, anyone have any concerns? I'm just kind of here, interested to hear some other people's views on it, just because I think missiles are a difficult weapon system to balance. I, I do agree with that, 